they'll bring up fourth down and six. Hey, give credit to Dorian Brooks and Charles Davis there as they were pursuing him with everything they had. Yeah, he wasn't able to come up in, in that uh, play. He had to continue to move laterally. He had to throw it on the run with his right hand. He was moving left and uh, threw it out of bounds. So the punter will stand back for Trinity Christian on the 23-yard line. Tigers with two receivers back. Noah Dixon and Ashton Williams awaiting the punt. It's kicked over toward Noah Dixon. No, it takes it, and a fair catch is called. We'll keep it here. We'll hit the ball on about the 28-yard line. They're going to spot it for the Tigers on the 29-yard line. So they got 71 yards to pay dirt. Scores 14-7. to seven. Your Troop Tigers on top, which was a back-and-forth first quarter. Yeah, I mean, really it was. was you know, we had some te- technical dif- difficulties here at the radio station, but now through y'all's, uh, through your and Coleman and Jeff Estes' creativeness, got us on Skype through the tele- through your cell phone, but we're back on the air and hopefully we'll remain on the air. But, um, man, that first quarter was back and forth and um, quick. It, it, it did go by quick, didn't yeah. it? It seemed like it was a running clock. <laughs> 8.35 left to go in the first half. 14-7 in favor of the Tigers. They've got the ball now. Logan Seafield, the quarterback. We'll keep it rolling around the right side. Nice job. Oh, excuse me, handoff. And here we go, off to the races. Tigers still running. And a tremendous job as we get across the field. So Jalen Reed from the slide position on the right side took out about a five, five yards and he slanted and went slanted behind the linebackers. And Logan Seat faked the handoff. In fact, I've been on the handoff. I was watching the ball. A lot of guys did. And, and Logan took about three steps to the right. And gave it to, to Jalen Reed. He picks up about 30 yards. This time we're going to hand the ball off. Continue to run across the 40 down to about the 37. Tigers trying to establish the run game with Javari Fanning, senior tailback. He's picking up to the to the left side Bannon behind uh, Jatorian Blackman yeah, and uh, Jeremy Patrick as he picks up about six Cam yards. On the side, second second, second down, down and down four, four for the Tigers. Back to the line of scrimmage of the Tigers. I, excuse me, pistol set. Wade Ingle looks back at Sinkfield, getting positioned. Hand off again. Yes, wide open. And, and down the, a beautiful job by the Tigers going into the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers. Freshman Sinkfield Davis Munkus on a receipt. He is so excited Touchdown, watching him give him. Tigers. He's going to go to the sidelines and do a chest bump. And just a really, really nice uh, play again by uh, the Tigers called freshman Davis Munkus' uh, name. Tell you what, the, the, that play actually is working so well. Wow. Number 38 is excited. All his teammates on the sidelines. It's got, it's got me twice. I thought, I thought he handed the ball off. You know, as it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Kick is up, and the kick is good. Tigers go to 21-7 with 7.31 left to go here in the first quarter play. Let's take 60 seconds. Lions Back seven. to the station. You listen to Triple High School Tiger Football on Eagle Sports. And W245AW LaGrange. Troop High School Football is brought to you by Well Star West Georgia Medical Center. Yo, I know the shirt now, huh? Mm-hmm. At Mud Creek Graphics, we have over 26 years of experience bringing you the best in apparel printing. Our exceptional graphic artists will work with you to create beautiful custom designed t shirts for any occasion. That's not all. Mud Creek Graphics is there for you for the printing of banners and signs. They'll get your message across to everyone. We love to support our local schools every year. So for your custom signs, banners, embroidery, and more, like Mud Creek Graphics, on the Book of Faces, visit us at our new location, 2219 West Point Road. Rogers Barbecue and Catfish House, a southern tradition since 1945, where we only serve U.S. farm-raised catfish. And now you can order online on Facebook or just type Rogers Barbecue LaGrange on your Google search engine and order right there. Then pick it up and enjoy it for the office, your family, or just you. Rogers Barbecue and Catfish House is open Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. on New Franklin Road in LaGrange, or just search on Google Rogers Barbecue and Catfish House in LaGrange. Now let's get back to the action. Troop High School Football on the Eagle Sports Network. Welcome back to Troop High School Tiger Football. The Tigers will kick off again. And not, not as much as they wanted out of that return. Nice job by Braden Patrick on his kick as he as he hit, he's topped it, Jack. And the ball just bounced so high in the air. And when Trinity Christian's number seven came down with a football, he and his partner bounced, bumped into each other and he fell to the turf. And that will place the ball on the 23-yard line. And that's where Trinity Christian will start this offensive series. 21-7 to seven in favor of the Tigers. 
Here comes Trinity Christian again, taking their time in the backfield. Pistol set as the quarterback will look back to the sideline. Taking their time. There's a snap. He's going to quarterback going to keep it. He didn't mean to. He nice. tried to hang it, hand it off, but there was nobody to hand it off to. Quay, Bur- Quay Birdsong was the first one to get a hand on him. As the quarterback looked surprised, and Birdsong reached out and uh, grabbed him. And then Dorian Brooks and Charles Davis finished him up, Jack. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that if you want to hand it off somebody. So that'll lose a yard, second down and 11. Again, we appreciate all you guys, all you fans that have uh, reached out to us via text or messenger and let us know that uh, we're clear. They're going to pass the ball again. Falls incomplete. Throws a, really un, the under route. Clear. Should have thrown a little bit farther incomplete. down the field and fall incomplete. Third down. Third down. Again, Jeremiah Horde on the defense that time as is from his corner position, from his left corner. A little soft. Well, the, the, I, th- I think they're scared also to throw to the outside shoulder because – I think we're going to pick the ball off if he does. You, you, you may be right. Uh, the quarterback, really bad timing between the quarterback and the wide receiver that time. Third and 11 for Trinity Christian. Back to pass again. Looking, looking. Airs it out high, way over his intended receiver. Good job by, uh, I want to say, looks like Player number 11 for the Tigers. Greg Houston on the reception, on, on the defense. It'll bring up fourth down and 11. So the, uh, the Lions from Trinity, uh, Trinity Christian will punt again. And you've got Ashton Williams standing at the 40, along with Noah Dixon at the 40, waiting to receive that punt. Good crowd from both sides. I mean, you can't ask for a better venue uh, from a home. This is a beautiful school, beautiful campus, as you and I discovered, yeah. walking all the way across it. <laughs> we got our steps in this afternoon. Yeah, we did. Tigers uh, almost hit it. Tell you, we, we found something there, Jack. It's going to be close. All right, so at the 40-yard line is where the Tigers will take it first at 10. We'll keep it here. Noah Dixon on the fair catch. He'll catch it at the 40-yard line. Last time we started at the 39-yard line, Jack, or actually the 29-yard line. So this time, as we traded positions, we're, uh, we gained a little spot up to the 40 as the Tigers are huddling on the sidelines. We've, we were joking. Is if the ball gets to about the 37, we've seen scoring three different times, one for Trinity Christian and two for the Tigers. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that something? That, that's a little zone. Something about being right there is uh, going to yeah. lead to points. They may have prayed over uh, at that area there today. Um, yeah, the Tigers faithful. The fan, Tiger Nation, is I look, what what bleachers they have for the visitors. It's decent size, but the Tiger fans have just packed it full over there. And there's plenty of them standing along the fence line that, that can't get in the stands because of the band. We appreciate the band traveling with us as well. So here come the Tigers coming back to this near side. Actually, Logan will roll back to the right side, and he, he throws it. As he goes out of bounds, I'm hoping they don't throw a flag. Give him credit, Jack. He, 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 was, he was in the in the grips, but he was still moving toward the out of bounds, and he threw it on the go. And he had a, he had a receiver in the in the twenty yards down the field, so in the area, so no ground, and he was outside the tackle box, but he had somebody he could throw to. So smart move by Sinkfield, uh, because he would if he had he got sacked. It would have been a loss of about seven yards. So second down and ten for the Tigers. It's an interesting play. We pull actually pull guards. Everybody's coming to this near side, and then Logan bootlegs back to the right. Well, that's that's the third time they've attempted that that particular play. Sinkfield winds up and throws complete for a game of about five. Caught by Jalen Reed and a host of Lions tackle Jalen, but it's a long pass from Jalen. Uh, I mean, excuse me, Amari from Sinkfield, as it was on the Trinity Christian side six. hash marks, if you will. So he took the snap from a shotgun position, wheeled it, threw a rocket out to Jalen Reed, caught it. But as soon as he did, there was uh, six Lions just all over him. So down. third down and six for the Tigers as the ball rests on the 45-yard line. Logan was sitting in there, put a man in motion from the far side. That's Ashton. Plenty of time on the play clock as the Tigers pulling some of Trinity Christian's uh, play calling as they clap and then look to the sidelines for an adjustment. Logan waiting. Now he'll call for it. Looking to pass. Throws it. Complete for a first down. Spinning, trying to get to the 45, but that will be a first down. Nice job to, to uh, Tarion Smith is from his wideout position. He had the inside guy, um, I want to say, uh, Ashton Williams drove off the corner, allowing uh, 
Smith to be wide open, Davis and he Johnson threw it. When he caught it, it was a first down. He picked up a couple of yards after catch. That'll move it into Lions territory at the 46-yard line. 9-11 is the uh, time left here in the second quarter of play. Tigers leading right now 21-7. Did you say 9-11 or 5-11? 5-11 is what I should have said. That's fine. I think I said 9-11. Get on the ball. Nice job. Fumble on the play. Wow. Like it was a fumble. A little mix up in the handoff the there to Javari Fanning and Logan Sinkfield. Uh, does lose four, but we salvaged the football. Is good heads up by Logan as the ball bounced away from him. He quickly jumped on it as they had a couple of those big lion defenders, Jack, uh, right on top of the football as well. But hey, we're, we'll take possession. Uh, we'll take that fumble. We'll get it back, but rather than losing that fumble, but it'll put the ball back on our side of the 50 at about the 49 and a half. So second down and call it 14 for the Tigers. The you know, Lions will pounce on some pigskin. Logan quickly takes the ball and throws it downfield back to the original line of scrimmage. And that'll be about it. Third down. He throws it hard again out to uh, Bray Natcherson. Uh, picks up about four, maybe five. It'll bring down third down and ten as it moves it back into the Lions' den, <laughs> the Lions' territory at the 46-yard line. So we've got to go 10 yards down to the 36 for a first down. Third and 10. Big play here for the Tigers, Jack. It is. 21-7, to 7, 345 left until halftime. Your Tigers are on top. The Tigers looking to keep moving the ball. they got to get 10-plus to get a first down. We've seen the Tigers actually go all the way on a play like this in the past. Tiger's going to call a timeout as Glisson runs out on the field. So they take a timeout. We'll take one as well. 60 seconds. Two Time spots out. back to the station. Tigers Play. leading 21-7 here in the first half of play That'd on Eagle Sports. By Truth County. So Waltrip Steel's goal is to bring affordable metal pricing to the surrounding areas. Located at 2418 Veterans Memorial Parkway in Lynette, Waltrip Steel sells to the general public as well as commercial and industrial businesses. They offer roofing panels, commercial roofing, and complete building packages. In addition, Waltrip Steel provides all types of galvanized stainless and black metal. Give them a call today at 334-630-1117. 334-630-1117. For all your steel needs, large or small, Waldrop Steel. When we started our small independent pharmacy we wanted to set ourselves apart by providing service that is exceedingly abundantly above anything a customer could ask well the medicine cabinet did just that exceed customers expectations as we have grown to help serve our community our service has not been forgotten the medicine cabinet on moody bridge vernon and lee's crossing is your locally owned pharmacy when you are a part of the medicine cabinet family we will do everything we can to make you feel right at home now let's get Back to the action. Troop High School Football on the Eagle Sports Network. Welcome back to Troop High School Tiger Football. We're in the, the second quarter play. 327 left to go. 21-7. It's a third down for the Tigers. Third and 10. Sinkfield rolling to this near side. Looks, looks, hit. And brought down. Uh, it's gonna, he's going to be able to turn and throw it about the time. But the, the Trinity Christian guys are saying, no, hit the ground, no, hit the ground. But the officials may, if they call it complete, it'll be a first down for the Tigers. Let's see what the ruling is on the field. Uh, we've got some uh, – we, we've got a – Coaches are in on it. Players the, are in on it. Yeah, the officials are in session now. Let's see what they say. We can only pray for an, a completed pass. They're pointing one way. They're pointing the other. What do we got? They're bringing in the, the referee, the guy with the white hat on. He's telling the coach, please, we can handle this without you. We don't need your input. It's definitely not uh, – it's, it's definitely discussion down there. The <laughs> coach is still trying to give his two cents. He was pushed back. Now he's back out there again. He said, look, throw a flag. Throw a flag. No, I'm just joking, guys. They're good guys here. So He, the, he definitely wants to get his point across. Logan was coming around. He was hit as he threw. All right, here we go. What's going on? It actually looks like they may give him a reception. The ruling on the field was an incomplete pass. Oh, okay. So, all right, so and that's the correct call. So third, fourth so, down. Oh, really? It's so fourth that's down. Now, hang on a second now. You're, you'd say stuff like worse than that on the radio, hush. <laughs> <laughs> 307 left to go in the first half of play. That'll 21-7. The, but the the hair's getting up on my back of those lions. Timeout <laughs> by Truth County. So another timeout. Twenty-one to seven, three oh seven. The ball here is. We're keeping it here. 
ball rests on the about the 46 yard line. And Greg, could he be contemplating deciding to, to go for it and, and trying to and get something out of this? Or fourth and ten? Or, or I, I, would better, I would better think he would be put it back to punt and try to pooch kick it number Lions. one. That's an obvious thing he should do. But if he decides to do anything, Lions trickery, I think he lines up for a punt homes. and comes out of it with a pass play. Because you got to pick up ten. You know, for a first down. If he doesn't get it, it's, it's, the more yards he can get, obviously, the better he's getting Trinity backed up. But the uh, last thing we want to do with 307 left until halftime is to do a trickery and then and Trinity Christian capitalize on it going into halftime. That's not give them momentum because they do get the ball in the That's second true. half. That's true. They will receive the kickoff as they deferred. They won the toss and deferred. But yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm expecting you know to put the ball away. Go, you know the old saying, it goes without saying? But you could still need to say it sometimes. But, oh, you need to say that yeah, it was go, the right call? Yeah, go ahead and say it. Okay, it wasn't the right. No, I'm just messing with you. We had no idea. And, you know, the Trinity Christian uh, coach. Oh, you're going back bad. to the play. Yeah, it, yeah. It, was, it was a tough one. You know, I, I knew that because what happened is you, you had a couple of guys from Trinity Christian on the field, the cornerbacks, and they were looking the and they were making motions like, I, I think it's incomplete. What and a sportsmanlike call went against Troop. Uh, you probably got some argument from the coaches about what I was just talking about. About because again, some of the some of the players from Trinity Christian was coming over. and They were doing like 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 I think it's incomplete. I'm not sure, but but if he'd away like oh no no no, it, it, it been, he could have sold it a little bit better. Is all I'm saying. You and I didn't have that great vision because all the players from Trinity Christian was blocking our view. Was well, so I look now? The it's fourth and twenty five now, so probably we're not going to. But try to, try that, a uh, fake. Fake punt, yeah. That that probably um, – Got taken yeah. out pretty quick there. Yeah. Let's go back to punt it. So, Ben Taylor will stand on our own 25-yard line. Ben awaits the snap. Takes it. Good snap. Gets the ball off. Nice high kick, too. And taken. Logan Moss. Wow. At about the 35-yard line. He, 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 what, the he's lucky he got line. that. He kind of had to slide to get That's it. Wow. A lot of the Tigers standing around him, but he slides to the 35-yard line and, and catches that that high punt. About six Tigers that actually overrun the punt and had to turn around. And, the, and number seven for the Lions slid to the 35-yard line. But uh, what, a, what a gutsy play by number seven because – Wow, there's a lot of Tigers ready to pounce on that pig skin, too. I would really love to see the Tigers get an interception or, or a turnover here late in this first half of play. Tigers leading 21-7. Exactly three minutes to go until halftime. As Jack said, 21-7, to your Tigers in the lead. Ball's placed on the 35-yard line. They'll send three men wide to this near side. There's the snap, back to pass. A lot of time looking, throws across the middle. Nice job. Falls incomplete. Stay down. Uh, Greg Houston, nice job by sophomore Greg Houston on the uh, defense uh, as he's man-to-man with that wide out. Tried a slant pass, and he ran into Greg, and by the time the ball was thrown, so uh, extremely overthrown. Your Tigers uniform tonight, Navy helmets, white jerseys, Navy pants. Some of them electing to wear the pink socks in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Trinity Christians in their purple helmets, black jerseys, black pants. Oh, but back, back to pass on. again thrown. Yes, finally. And now brought down, shy Player of the first down. So the umpire did Hamilton see it, threw his pink flag seven. down, as it was very obvious that when Quay Birdsong's in the backfield before the snap and the guy's got his jersey. Pull it on it. <laughs> it's yeah, it's extended. That'll back it up 10. Uh, from the spot of the foul, which was two yards behind the line of scrimmage. Actually, they're going to take it from the line of scrimmage. Holding. Offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot. Repeat second. Well, he was in the backfield when he was holding his jersey, but they're going to spot it uh, from the line of scrimmage. So it'll be a, from the 35 so down to the 25, so second and, and 20, 20 for the Lions. Time ticks down, 245 left to go. Here this first half, 21-7 in favor of the Tigers. Trinity Christian will go to the pass again. Nice job by uh, number eight for the Tigers, Jeremiah Horde, on this left side defensive uh, end. I mean, actually, uh, cornerback position. Uh, Quay Birdsong again just 
came hard driving to this. Take about four big steps and did an inside spin. It was in the quarterback's face. Now, the quarterback's kind of like a – had an arm like a rubber band. You know how you just – just back and like a slingshot. You throw it. Yep. Up, he just kind of flips it out there, and uh, he just flipped it for 40 yards. So, he's got an arm on him. Third down and 20 for Tr- Trinity Christian. Back to pass again. Way high. That may be. Oh, like, oh just look up. That was an interception waiting to happen. Ah, uh, wow. We had uh, Terrion Smith, it looks like, running hard back. Actually, Jalen Reed was running hard back. And if to, to if he had a, in essence, intercepted, he was the only guy in the round. If he had gotten back another step and intercepted it, well, that would have been just like a punt, as the Trinity Christian Lions are about to do, as it's fourth and 20. Their ball's on the 25, and they'll have a punter come in just a second as Noah Dixon and Ashton Williams uh, stand on the 35-yard line. Again, another nice defensive stance by these true by Tigers. Dixon and Williams back to receive for True County. So their punt, their punter will stand on the 14-yard line. And the Tigers elect no, not No, no, only bad snap, and the Tigers elect not to pursue it. What a terrible punt. Is this going to go out of bounds, Jack, at wow. about the 36-yard line? The, I was just about to say, the, the now the Tigers have, have almost blocked two punts, and this time the they elected to set up a return, here. and it was a bad snap yeah, over his head. Quarter. He picks it up. Only 10 yards down the field. Wow. The Tigers in excellent field position uh, inside of three minutes, Jack. Well, two, two, no, 219. 19. So plenty of time still on the clock. They'll be on the 35-yard line. Hey, we're in the zone. Of the 35, Trinity Christian. Yep. Coach Andrew Calhoun coming in. He's going to join us at halftime, talk about all things Tiger Sports. Oh, that's why he called me. I, he didn't answer my phone when I called him back. I, what, ask, look, we'll see what I do when he asks for some money. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just messing with him. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> I'm picking. He, he just wants to go eat. I, I, hear you, you boy, I do you. too. I do too. So what's for lunch? All right, so the Tigers. See if we can capitalize, get a score on this mistake by Trinity Christian. Logan all by himself in the backfield. Swings it out. That's Complete a lateral. That's a lateral. Noah going to throw it downfield. Well, flea flicker here. Oh, it's intercepted. Intercepted right in the end zone. Be They'll bring it out. To the 20 and 25 yard line. Noah just didn't have enough on it. So Dixon a really aired it out, but just didn't have quite enough to get it down the field. You know, this. Aura, if you will, just happened between both teams. It was a lateral to Dixon. Dixon hit his hands and went back up in the air, so he had to gather it in. And and rather than – he had plenty of time. He was not under duress. And rather than – he just – he quickly threw it and actually threw it short. And the wide receiver looked back and tripped and fell into the end zone. It's like it had – Perfect storm. Yeah, it had from the moment it was thrown from Sinkville – this is not going to work, yep. unfortunately. But, uh, well, come on, Tigers. Let's fight back. 203 left to go. And on the left, left side goes Trinity Christian. Not a lot there. Second down. He winds the clock. The Trinity Christian tries to get something going on the outside. They'll pick up two yards, second and eight, as the clock continues to run inside a minute and a half. Right at a minute and a half. The run defense tonight, Greg, has been very effective. And, and so far, you know, let's, hey, give kudos to our secondary as well. With the exception of the little short 37-yard TD inside slant, we've kind of held them in check right now as far as all these long balls. Please whistle dead. And they, they have Ball actually start. illegal motion. So back Barker, about five. Barley, so still, still, still second down. down. Second and 13. Clock takes down to a minute 25. Back so, five yards is bring realize it's second down. down and it depends game. on how long Trinity Christian takes to run these plays. What the Tigers need is to capitalize either on a fumble or if he does try to throw it, a pick six. Because man, I sure wish we could have capitalized on that on that bad punt by Trinity uh, Trinity Christian there with right under two minutes at that time. There's the snap. Quarterback going to run up into the line of scrimmage. Not a great choice. Offensive lineman. All right, so the flag goes down because I think the offensive lineman jumped back in there without his helmet. That actually could be a penalty because he continued to participate, Jack. Let's see what he says. They're having a discussion about it, and they're both nodding at each other. The the referee grabbed his ear. 
I don't know why. He probably had an itch. But it is going against Trinity Christian. How do I know that? Because he's facing that way. And he's going to walk that way. Walk this way. What's that guy? Okay. Arrow? Illegal participation on the offense. Half a distance to the goal. Second down. All right, half the distance. And, and by that he means the guy without the helmet chose to get back in the in the uh, scrum and help move the stack forward, and that's illegal participation. You can't do that. You go, boy. <laughs> so uh, he also has to come out of play. 21-7, 54 seconds left to go here. So illegal Tigers would love to get the chance to get the ball up. back in their hands before the end of the first ball half. about the 11, second down and forever. So here – Second, actually 22 there, guy. You, you know it's the right thing to say. But anyway, uh, the Tigers could really use a turnover right now, Jack. Here's the snap. Turn and handoff. He's going to try to get to the outside. Nice block in the backfield. And ball He'll get up the to about the pick up good nine on the play. All right, Javari Fanning. Good job by Fanning to recognize it, but he does take a squat. And he kind of sits down because he's, 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 he got, he did, he Not noticed out. it. But he tried to deflect. He got hit in the ribs, probably took some of his breath away. But he's uh, he's up, running off the field, and it'll be a timeout taken uh, by the Tigers. Trying to, uh, with this is third down and long with 40 seconds, trying to say, hey, let's see if we can hold them and force them to punt, uh, stop the clock as we still have two, two timeouts left. So good move by Coach Glisson, Jack, to call that timeout. Could stop that clock from running. We have two or one left. Well, the scoreboard says two. Okay. I and, just wonder we called one earlier before this one. But, you know, I've well, been wrong according, just today. According to our athletic director, he stuck one finger up, and it was his index finger. Okay. So I know it's right. I thought maybe he was drinking tea. He had the, <laughs> he had his, he pinky, had his extended. pinky up. Okay. No, I don't see any hot tea in here. Of course, it would be nice because you already put your jacket on. I got cold, yeah. <laughs> Here I'm in short pants, and even even uh, coaches Calhoun's got his all right. Leave me alone. Jacket on. No, you're good. You're good. I, I'm, I'm I'm with you, buddy. Hey, we're getting older. We, blood's getting thinner, man. All right, it's, come on, folks. Just happens. They're taking their time to get back to the line of scrimmage. Twenty-one-seven is your score. We're at forty seconds left to go here in the first half. Now everybody's through milling around so we get something done now. So Amarius Purdue will come in and spell Quay Birdsong as he kind of takes a trip to the sidelines. All right, so we got third down and 14. Now here we go. Waiting on the snap. There it is. Turn. Nice job. Oh, nice off. job. Hold on to him. Good job. They'll, they'll bring him down. He'll get back to the original line of scrimmage just shy of the, the 25-yard line. Tyler Leslie. Just hammered through. It'll be fourth down. You'd think now, Leslie do the Tigers the call a timeout? Or they just – because they're not going to get a playoff. I think they're just going to let it run out. Oh, shucks. Well, I, if I got one timeout – well, I, the Tigers are showing – it's hard to say. I don't know. I mean, if, if we've got one, we ought to use it. So, maybe we don't have one. Because <laughs> evidently we don't have one because I would have used it. That don't mean anything, but I still would have used it. <laughs> Clock takes down to 0-1. And that's the end of the first half of play. Right, the Tigers leading right now over the half. Trinity Christian Lions in a very important region. Four quad A game, 21 to 7. We're going to take a break. We'll let you listen to the bands. We've got the athletic director of Troop High School, Coach Calhoun, will join us. We'll talk some things about Troop Sports. Right now, you're listening to Troop High School Tiger Football on Eagle Sports. Are yellowish stains showing up on your ceiling? The longer you wait, the harder it becomes to ignore and possibly the more expensive the repair becomes. Ricky Smith Roofing is locally licensed and insured and waiting for your call today at 706 at 840195. At Ricky Smith Roofing, they offer a six-year workmanship warranty on all new shingle and metal roofing installations. Call Ricky Smith Roofing at 706 at 840195. If you got a leak... Papa Smith, take a peek. Hi, friends. It's T-O-W-D at Kilograms. Right now, our inventory is so large, it will make our eyes glaze over like donuts. Who doesn't love donuts? This month's feature vehicle is the 23 Kia Sorento. Boy, is it sharp, spunky, funky, and fun to drive. Stop in today and test drive one at 1217 Lafayette Parkway in the beautiful city of LaGrange, Georgia, and find out for yourself. You won't regret it. Shop us online at kilograms.com. Help support your low economy, and God bless America. 
Now let's get back to the action. Troop High School Football on the Eagle Sports Network. Welcome back to Troop High School Tiger Football. We're leading at halftime 21-7. Uh, as we're up here in uh, Sharpsburg, Georgia at uh, Trinity Christian High School. Actually, school as they've got the pre-K through 12. Uh, lovely campus. And uh, we'll talk about all things Troop High Sports now with Coach Andrew Calhoun. Coach Calhoun, thank you for joining us. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Jack. Thank you for having me again. And uh, it's always good to see you. Hey, I tell you what, great to see you, too. I'm real proud of the Tigers tonight. Uh, a, a little bit of adversity early in the first quarter, but uh, kind of right at the ship, uh, leading 21-7. Yeah, they've uh, settled in and uh, – I think a big part of that is, is Logan Seatsfield's selling in at the yep. quarterback spot. You know, um, he uh, had those couple games to kind of ready for the, down the stretch of the season. You know, we'll, we got tonight. Uh, hopefully we'll get a few more scores and uh, keep playing good defense and keep them out and get the win here tonight. And then we got the big one next week against the Grange. Uh, then on to that second season. So it'll be 0-0 zero and zero after next week. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, let's just talk about that real quick because I'm, I'm hearing lots of different scenarios about you know, things. Of course, the most important thing we need to do is win out. Yeah, uh, that, that's the most important that's, thing we do. But what are our, our chances at being number one in the region? So uh, basically, the only avenue we have or path to the region championship would be to uh, win out uh, tonight, next week versus the Grange, and have Stars Mill uh, lose either tonight or next week okay. against their rival, uh, Whitewater. And, you know, these rivalry games, you never know. that's a natural rivalry for them uh, in Fayette County and then, of course, us in the range. So a lot of things happen. We have a playoff spot locked in, um, so we're going no matter what. It's just now is it going to be region champs or is it going to be second or third? Okay, yeah. Um, right now, we, we, won't, we won't finish fourth. With the lowest we could get is third. But. So you got, we got, of course, the Stars of the Trinity Andy Christian, Andy LaGrange, Andy. and Trover, the, the four Andy. that we're talking about yes. in our region, kind of all the top. And all of them with four wins in the region. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's got the same record as of tonight. Uh, that'll change depending on who you're playing. Um, but, you know, we should we should the pride of finish, Andy, like I said, either Andy. three or uh, highest Andy. Andy. one, or we, or we could be the two. In another scenario with some tiebreakers and stuff, but okay. um, I mean, I heard like a port, port, point differential. Yeah, we, yeah, point. we do a point differential. So you go head to head. That's the first tiebreaker, and then uh, which Stars Mill would have us on that, but then we only lost to them by two. But they got beat by Trinity by seven. So our point differential is if we went out and it gets to that is is a uh, plus five. Okay. So as long as we beat Trinity tonight by more than five, so if the score holds as it is. We, we covered that tiebreaker. That will give us that region champ with okay. the Stars Mill loss, too. So, um, Ooh, yeah, wow. it, it gets it gets kind of – I was <laughs> reading through the uh, George High School Daily. Uh, there's one region. They actually – they're, they're tiebreakers. They've all beat each other. They've all – it is uh, – I think it's a two-way uh, classification, uh, Metter and those type schools. Mm-hmm. They've all beat each other, and uh, they actually are down to a – depending on the next two weeks, it could get down to a – they draw names out of a hat. With the the with tie, tie teams that are tied to determine the seating, we, we've uh, seen coin flips in the past. Yeah, so uh, there's, we, we, there's a reason with we, the coin flip. We, we've never done well with coin flip. I can no, see you right now. No, uh, <laughs> you know we we last year we uh, lost the coin flip in the quarterfinals with Holy Innocence. You know it ended up being they hosted the quarterfinal right. game, and then the the next week, you know we lost that coin flip. Um, you know to go had to go down to Benedictine and Savannah. So, you know, yeah, the coin flip doesn't go to favor. Now, I, I didn't lose a coin flip personally. The Georgia High School <laughs> does a universal coin flip and, you know, determines that. But, uh, you know, so it wasn't me personally. I, I think we need to provide the coin next time. I just, just yeah, you know, do something. Not, not, yeah. Yeah, not saying I don't trust Georgia High School, but, you know, let's just, let's just check. Let's take a break. We'll come back. Lots more to talk about. We're Calhoun. The Tigers leading 21-7 to seven at halftime on Eagle Sports. Hello, I'm Steve Boatner, your LaGrange Edward Jones Financial Advisor. I believe in learning about you so I can understand what you're working toward before you invest your money. Whether you're planning for retirement, saving for college for children or grandchildren, or just trying to protect the financial future of your family, call me, Steve Boatner, or just search Edward Jones Steve Boatner to get started. My Edward Jones office is located at 119 Poplar Circle, just off Lafayette Parkway in LaGrange. 
Edward Jones, Making Sense of Investing, member SIPC. As a mom of two boys, it's important to keep my family comfortable year-round, and there's only one name I trust to do so, Ace Air. Ace Air has been keeping our indoor air comfortable and healthy for more than 20 years. Ace Air is the area's only York-certified comfort expert dealer, so you enjoy the best price and warranty. From installations to repairs to air quality, Ace Air is the team that treats your comfort as their top priority. So call Ace to condition your space or visit them online at ace-air.net. At Wellstar West Georgia Medical Center, we believe teamwork makes all the difference in your health. We believe that skilled people can achieve higher standards and exceptional results. We believe in a game plan that's focused on patient safety and quality care. At Wellstar West Georgia Medical Center in LaGrange, we believe in life well lived. To learn more about award-winning health care, visit wellstar.org slash westga. Start the new school year off right with a new haircut for you and your kid with two great locations to choose from. Sawmill Place in the Piggly Wiggly Shopping Center off Roanoke Road and the Commerce Avenue location next to Kroger. Great Clips saves your haircut details so you can get the same great haircut every time from any Great Clips. Save the time with convenient online check-in. Download the app today. Sawmill Place in the Piggly Wiggly Shopping Center off Roanoke Road and the Commerce Avenue location next to Kroger. Great Clips. It's going to be great. Now let's get back to the action. Troop High School Football on the Eagle Sports Network. Welcome back to Troop High School Tiger Football. Tigers leading 21-7 here at halftime uh, as we're taking on the Trinity Christian Lions here in Sharpsburg, Georgia. And I'm here with Coach Andrew Calhoun. He's the athletic director at Troop High School. And, uh, of course, the uh, football season, you know, I'm sure you all have been celebrating the winter sports, uh, the, you know, a lot of a lot of kids with a lot of activities, but the, the clock's about to turn, and the winter sports are, are, are right there on us. Yeah, getting ramped up. Uh, basketball just concluded their tryouts on Tuesday, and so they've already started practice, both boys and girls. And uh, wrestling's already started their, their workouts, practices every night, and uh, swimming's kicking up here wow. uh, here in the next couple of weeks. So, yeah, rolling right on into it. It just uh, – and here's the thing. Every year it seems like it goes – the older I get, the faster time goes. Yeah. That's not a good thing, but uh, – you know, it's just part of it, and uh, we're going to roll with it. And, uh, you know, looking forward, uh, we got a chance with wrestling to uh, repeat as region champs again. Coach Garner feels good about his guys. He's got a really, really talented and deep uh, freshman class of wrestlers that came in. Awesome. And then uh, girls' basketball is always going to be competitive. Oh, gosh, yes. Coach Thornton uh, got a lot, of, a lot of good girls returning to their squad. And we got a new basketball coach, uh, Coach Vacher Hammett, who's coming over from Long Cane Middle School. And, uh, taking over from Coach Gay, he got promoted to assistant principal at Franklin Forest. Um, you know, so we we uh, turned the keys over to Coach Vacher, and you know, all those guys last year were really young. Um, so I think you know, there's potentially a 16, 17 win basketball season uh, oh, for us too. So, well, and, you know, we're so and not really unique in, in Lagrange, especially the way our, our football teams perform. But uh, some that might have a chance to play on that team as well are. Or out here on the field. Yeah, so you know they'll they'll have actually a, a separate tryout. You know, with the football guys. Usually after that game, they'll give them a week, and then you know, or a couple of days. However, they usually leave it up to the kids, but give them a little rest, and then let them come out, try out for the team, and you know, uh, then they'll just start rolling right into basketball season. That's how it goes. Well, you know, the, the, everything's so compact now in the GHSA sporting calendar. You know, they, they try to get all the championships in before. Uh, you know the, the graduation right. and everything. Uh, when I was coming through my day, if you were playing baseball, oh, you were even soccer. You, you actually, the state title game was after graduation. Exactly, it sure was. Uh, but it's not like that anymore. And, and you know, it, it makes it tough on us because you know the winter sports are still going to be going on, and you're starting in the spring. You know, in mm-hmm. February, you know, baseball, soccer, tennis, golf. They're all going to be uh, starting in the spring and, and soccer, and so. I remember you know. when I was coaching golf many years ago, and you know we we're it's late February yeah. and it's ice filling yeah. in the morning of the, oh, the it's, field. It's freezing, it's freezing. But you know, just we had a really good fall uh, year. Uh, extremely proud of our girls' softball team. Uh, they they uh, you know fought their tails off down there in Cairo. Uh, in that super regional, you know, got to that final game mm-hmm. uh, against Perry, and uh, you know they played a three-hour marathon softball game, won eight to seven in eleven innings versus K Road wow. to knock them out. Then turn right around twenty minutes later and beat Perry in game one, three to nothing, and then. 
you know, we just ran out of steam. And, that's a lot, and that's a lot of that's game play. Lot of, that's a lot of games, a lot of innings right there all back to back. But super proud of Coach Simpson and Coach Dodges and their girls and how they competed this season. And, uh, you know, we will be good again we'll next year. Well, also, with a lot of weather challenges, we went through a month, it seems like, we just didn't get a game in. That's right. Yeah, the rain and all that stuff. And then got to mention uh, our girls' volleyball team, uh, Coach Hutch Blair, uh, Savannah Bartley, and, and Coach uh, Ward. Uh, you know, they did a tremendous job this year. Uh, they really didn't get clicking. Uh, we had our Dig Peak tournament on right. October the 4th. And uh, we ended up winning that, and, and I don't I don't know what happened, but that's Coach Blair. He identified that that those matches against our in in, uh, in county schools is when it, everything started to click. Right. And then they went on a run as a four seed, uh, you know, onto the lead eight. And, and this is a testament to our region in volleyball. Mm-hmm. All four of our region teams went on to the lead eight. That's amazing. And uh, it was uh, it was great. And uh, I went to the, the match against Central Carroll, and, and look, they, they got a girl now. Uh, when I say I didn't want a ball to be spiked to me by her, <laughs> um, she was – and I, I went up to her after I said, look, I, you know, that's one of the best performances I've seen individually on a volleyball court uh, in my time is just being around athletics. She was – and she was a good kid too. She, uh, she talked to me for a few minutes. She's got some offers for and smaller now, schools. Right. Uh, cause she's not very tall. She's only probably about five, seven, five, eight. But she can climb it up. Yep. She climbed up, had a good, you know, good form technique. And, uh, but our girls, I tell you, they beat them in that first set, 25-23. And, you know, they were tough the entire uh, – we just couldn't – you know, they get a run and we just couldn't quite quit back in that last – Set, uh, you know, it was 25 23 for them. So we fought all the way to the end. Our, that was the best game our girls played, uh, or excuse me, best match the entire year. And they, they played their tails off. Uh, well, extremely you know, proud of them. Think about volleyball. You know, every, every time the ball is hit, somebody's going to score a point. Yeah. And uh, it, it can get away from you real quick, but also you can come that, back real that's quick. That's right, yeah. And, and that's, it was really ebb and flow. You know, we just went on a few little stretches there where we couldn't get anything to fall. But Chris, is, is that the farthest our volleyball yes, team has ever yes. been? So that, uh, to, to my knowledge, and doing some checking with Coach Dowden, who's our longtime volleyball coach, uh, she's still teaching math at the school. And uh, she told me, she said, you know, we made it to the uh, Sweet 16 right. a few times when she was a coach. But, yes, uh, lead eight in volleyball uh, is the farthest – you know, we have, we have ever made it. And they had really, you know, those four seniors that played this year, uh, with the exception of one, Haley Brayer came to us as a sophomore. But those four seniors, the other three girls have been playing since they were in eighth grade oh, wow. at the middle school. And, you know, and they, they started, they got a lot of playing time as freshmen. Uh-huh. And so it's just continually building. They had great leadership all year from that group. And uh, I think that's what, you know, ultimately carried carried him far. And and this was Hutch Blair's first year? Uh, second. 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 Uh, wait was minute. that was third? No, no. Uh, so you, Anna left major, you two ready? years ago, right? And, Anna wasn't able to do it last year. She had a baby. She, so, yeah, that was not, his first year as last year. Oh, so this what is his second year. Is that, having a baby? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is his second year? Yeah, second year. Hey, that yeah. is great. Yeah, he, uh, he's, uh, he's got it rolling. To, to Hutch and, the, and, the, and Blair. I'm sure it's leadership by his daddy, Farrell. That's, that's right. what helped, right? Yeah, no, they, they, they did great, though, and uh, really, really proud of those girls and uh, the way they competed, though. It represented our school. Well, here we are at uh, Sharpsburg at Trinity Christian. The Tigers leading right now, 21-7. Coach Kelly, I appreciate you joining us here at halftime. Let you yes, go sir. down and get your seat and enjoy this second half of play. All right. Thank you, Jack. All right, appreciate man. all y'all doing. Folks, we thank you for listening to us, and we'll be back in just a minute. The second half of play on Eagle Sports. Perry Prather here with me uh, from Holmes Pharmacy. And, Perry, I've got three locations, but it's it's more than just locations. It's about the people. It is, Coleman. Um, I've been real blessed. We've got a great staff here at Holmes Pharmacy. I have pharmacists Charles Reed and Mandy Lamb here. Down here in Hamilton, we have Kim Story, John Ritchie, and Garrett Brown. And we have awesome staff down there. And then we also here at Sawmill inside the Piglet Wing, we have Elise Jeter and Scott Burton running that store. So get our app, go to our website. We'd love to see you. HomesPharmacy.com. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Matt Orr is ready to help you combine home and auto and save in LaGrange. Call 706-882-0046 today. Like your good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on the 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. <laughs> More than a scratch. So now what do you do? 
Will you carry it to the Rexperts, Precision Auto Body in LaGrange? They are a color match specialist and will wow you with the quality of the job because they have a downdraft spray booth and the experts who know how to use it. So call and get a free estimate. They will handle the insurance company paperwork and fix your car so you're happy and back on the road. Call Precision Auto Body in LaGrange at 706-884-9292. That's 706-884-9292. Hello, folks. My name is Gerald Kemp, owner of Kemp's Dalton West Carpets in Noonan and Peachtree City and Kemp's Carpets in LaGrange. I purchased this airtime on this station to apologize. Yes, that's right, to apologize to all of you listening. You see, when you come into any one of our three stores, you will not find a special can of paint for the bathroom. No washing machines. You see, at Kemp's, we specialize in one thing and one thing only. Floor coverings. Kemp's Dalton West Carpets in Noonan, Peachtree City, and Kemp's Carpets in LaGrange, where we do floor coverings, and we do it right. Now let's get back to the action. Troop High School Football on the Eagle Sports Network. Welcome back to Troop High School Tiger Football. Tigers leading at halftime by a score of 21-7. I tell you what, I was... I, we, just get off the air too quick because, Coach Calhoun, you had one more thing you wanted to tell us about. Yes, I, I want to brag on our one-act plate uh, performers. They are back-to-back Region 4 Quad A there champions. There you go. Uh, won that yesterday, defeated uh, Stars Mill, Whitewater, LaGrange, and Trinity, Trinity Christian, where Red Knight actually came in second place. Um, and hats off to Noel Jordan, our one-act play director, drama teacher, and, and all those performers. Uh, look, I, you know, I, I like I pride myself on being honest and transparent with people. You know, one act's really not my 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 thing. Uh, you know, but I, I did. I was in one act in, in high school. My junior year was on you stage. Did you pull crew. your tree? No, no. I was stage crew my junior year. <laughs> okay, and stage actually, crew. I was actually a, a, an actor participant as a senior. So uh, I got a little bit of experience of it. But my wife had always told me. She said. Andrew, like, the, you need to come over there and watch. They put on Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer every year around Christmas time for the all the elementary school oh, kids. They'll, they'll and, turn uh, out, sure do. And uh, it's, my wife said, Andrew, like, they, it is phenomenal. They do a really good job. And, Noel uh, is one of the most talented set designers in the area. Yes. Uh, just remarkable what she's able to put on that stage. So we're, we're, we did, uh, or, or we're competing at our play as a, a monster calls. And uh, it's got a really great story. And uh, part of the the main character always the tree comes as in a nightmare to her, and you ought to see the kid that was the tree. He had to learn how to walk on stilts, then had to learn how to walk on stilts with his costume on. Uh, there's another girl behind him working his head, and there's two people on the side uh, who are the voices in addition to the guy in the suit that are holding the working wow. arms. I mean, it was very elaborate. They did a, a tremendous job uh, with their play yesterday, and I didn't watch the others, but I watched our kids at Troop. And uh, I was blown away and really impressed at uh, how well rehearsed it was, um, you know, the, the way the kids interacted. And, and I was engaged, and, and they were engaged. I mean, everybody, there were some people, uh, you know, what I've been told were actually in tears at the end of it. Uh, if you never don't know anything about that play, it's about a kid that's bullied at school and, and uh, gets picked on, and his mom's dying of cancer. That's the reason they're picking on him. But it's, it's, it's a great story, uh, stuff that really brings out like mental health struggles right. uh, that kids deal with today. And uh, I said we won the region championship and won that play. And then our actress, um, her name's Carla Constantino. Uh, she played the lead Come role on, of Connor, and going. she got best uh, voted best cooks. actress. Oh, and wonderful! She did a phenomenal okay. job. Uh, I've never met her personally, uh, right. you know, in, in school, but I'm gonna it's make really a point right. to go find her on Monday right, and just tell her how great of a job she did. That's right. Um, but it was it was an awesome play, and uh, like I said, I'm very happy for Noel Jordan and, and all those kids in the one act play, uh, and the way they competed and represented our school. And you know, it's always great for a win. They will compete, uh, I believe. It's a November date, a yep. couple weeks from now. It's, it's early November, yeah. Yeah, early November. Mm-hmm. I think it's, what, two weeks from now? Yep. Uh, down at Tip, Tip High School yep. is where the uh, state championships for one act play uh, are going to be. So we'll, we'll represent our region. Uh, we finished runner up last year, I believe, or third. By my, I know we finished top four in Quad A last year. Um, I think North Oconee uh, ended up beating us. Well, she's got a great opportunity yes. for a win this year. Yeah, she does. And, and like I said, that was, that was a great, great play. I enjoyed it watching it and uh hey. you know i'm glad we were able to host hats off to our uh, assistant cheerleading coach uh, carly Hulson. she uh helped me facilitate that whole thing and that's a big it's a big undertaking she, she did she she got with the judges made sure they were taken care of and back and forth and you know announced and, and like i said was facilitating the whole thing and uh 
you know, I really do appreciate her uh, helping that endeavor. So, uh, before I got out there, I, I, I really wanted to mention and brag on those kids because uh, I had a great time watching it. And, you know, uh, now, you know, public service announcement everybody that's listening tonight. If you enjoy plays or you want to go see a really good play, when Miss Georgia puts on her spring um, spring show, go buy a ticket. You know, she runs it for a couple of weeks on Saturdays. She's got different times. Mm-hmm. Go out, watch those kids perform because they do an awesome, awesome job. They really do. They really do. So. Well, Coach, I appreciate you. Thank, that yeah, kid thank you horse. again. I, I, yeah, like I said, I, I was sitting here thinking about it. I started writing a little list. I, I wanted to get into the volleyball and softball and, Everything and one accident, uh, important part of that. Yep. Greg, are you trying to talk to us? Hey, uh, got Coach Glisten here just for a second. Go ahead, to, uh, get him in for you. He has to get back out on the field. Coach, uh, pretty exciting first half, at least from the fan standpoint. I, I guess you're referring to that penalty I got, but uh, <laughs> you know, the big deal is right there. I just wanted an explanation. You know, it's a three minute conference over there. Somebody come tell me what the heck's going on, and they made me use a timeout right there. I was trying to hold our timeout, so that was the frustrating part. But you know, uh, we played pretty well, we had a chance to put them away right there and didn't do it. And so uh, we got we got to play defense first. So we got to see we got to get out there and get a stop. All right, let's go get him, Tigers. Hey, you heard Coach uh, Glisten uh, what he was talking about. You know, it goes back to that pass play, Jack, and uh, Coach Calhoun uh, of, of what he didn't see and he needed an explanation. And I guess you know how Coach can be on the sidelines, especially when he throws that visor down, Jack. Well, animated is what I like to say, animated. <laughs> uh, and unfortunately, it, it cost us a penalty and a timeout, one that we talked about we wish we had uh, at the end, right, right there at the end. Well, that's going to be the end of halftime. So let's take a break, and we'll come back. We'll have kickoff live here from Trinity Christian High School in Sharpsburg, Georgia. The Tigers leading right now 21-7 on Eagle Sports. It's fall, y'all. Tis the season for feed and football. At Eagle Radio, we have football covered, and the people at Lee's Crossing Feed and Farm have all your needs for feed covered with a great selection of quality food, plot mixes, bird feed, deer feed, combat chicken feed, pet food and feeders. Lee's Crossing Feed and Farm also carries Aryans and full lawnmowers, boutique items for the ladies, custom cowboy and cowgirl hats, and a lot more for the indoors and outdoors. Visit Lee's Crossing Feed and Farm today, located on West Point Road next to Charlie Joseph's. Roger Barbecue and Catfish House, a southern tradition since 1945, where we only serve U.S. farm-raised catfish. And now you can order online on Facebook or just type Rogers Barbecue LaGrange on your Google search engine and order right there. Then pick it up and enjoy it for the office, your family, or just you. Rogers Barbecue and Catfish House is open Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. on New Franklin Road in LaGrange. Or just search on Google... Rogers Barbecue and Catfish House in LaGrange. If you need roof repairs, call Ricky Smith Roofing. If you've got a leak, let Old Smith take a peek. Local roofing company with over 30 years of experience, they can handle simple leaks to major roof repairs. Check out Ricky Smith Roofing work on Facebook. Just search Ricky Smith Roofing. With free estimates available in Troop, Heard, Chambers, and Randolph County. Call 706-884-0195. If you got a leak, Papa Smith, take a peek. Hi, friends. It's T-O-W-E at Killer Grains. Right now, our inventory is so large, it will make our eyes glaze over like donuts. Who doesn't love donuts? This month's feature vehicle is the 23 Kia Sorento. Boy, is it sharp, spunky, funky, and fun to drive. Stop in today and test drive one at 1217 Lafayette Parkway in the beautiful city of LaGrange, Georgia, and find out for yourself. You won't regret it. Shop us online at KillerGrains.com. Help support your low economy, and God bless America. Now let's get back to the action. Troop High School Football on the Eagle Sports Network. Welcome back to Troop High School Tiger Football. 21-7 is your score as we're ending the halftime festivities as both bands did a tremendous job. Our thanks to Coach Andrew Calhoun for giving us all the information about all the stuff going on from an athletic and also from an artistic standpoint. Great to hear about the one-act play, and then we get a chance to win region. And Ms. Dewell Jordan and her group. Doing a wonderful, wonderful job. I, I, I just uh, hope my arm doesn't get tired holding this uh, receiver up to my ear. But, hey, we thank you, Coleman Vice, for uh, your creativeness and, and uh, helping me get down to the sidelines. I, I'm excited now getting get down here where the action is, Jack. Well, if your arm can hold out, you know, my back's doing a great job carrying you all these years. Oh, so, uh, oh that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, I was 257 this morning on the scales. Yeah, I got to drop I, off. I, I, I would have said 258, but that's all right. <laughs> all right, here we go. We're going to get this thing started. And we've got everything's right with the roll. Greg's down the field, and we're ready to go. Tigers, a lot of space between their front line and their second line. 
Now they're kind of moving up a little bit. We're ready to go. Tigers have they're ready to kick the ball off to Trinity Christian. Trinity Christian, they won the toss and deferred to the second half. There's the whistle, and here we go. There's the kick. Bounces. Taking it about the 25, up to the 30, 35. Brought down across the 40. That's the 42-yard line. And that's where Trinity Christian will have it first and 10. Good field position for them. We're into the third quarter of play. 21-7 in favor of the True High School Tigers. Garrison Edwards Edward, on that uh, tackle for the Tigers. Let's see what offensive changes that they might make there, Jack, for the for the Trinity Christian Lions. Well, running the ball really didn't work as far as the, the traditional handoff. Now, the quarterback was able to do some damage a couple of times, keep the ball going off tackle. In fact, they tried it right off the bat, and this was not the thing to do. Because here comes Quay Birdsong. Moss is going to be stopped for a yard loss. He'll lose they say a yard. I'm going to say two. I had, uh, I'll, we'll chalk that up because I had a conversation with Quay in the end zone just then about what he, what he needs to be doing in the second half. So there you go. It must have worked. Second well, I tell you what, Greg, I appreciate 11. you being there to coach him up. Whatever. Man, look at the fans on the sidelines over here. The, uh, the, the stands are full, Jack. Tiger Nation traveling. They, and they're just lined up shoulder to shoulder on the, on the, on the fence line. Really, really nice to see. Tigers with that four man front. Coming across. They're going to try to get to the outside, and we're right there. Another loss, Greg, all the way back to the 35. Wow. Good job, but Birdsong's in on it. Terion Smith, Ashton Williams, just Greg Hort, Greg Houston, Jeremiah Hort. Oh, TJ Mitchell's out there, man. I. Dorian Brooks gets off the bottom of the tackle. They just, just stretch it all the way out to their sidelines. You know, Greg, we're only coming across with a four-man front, and as they try to begin to come to the outside, our, our corners are coming in and helping out. But if we can keep doing that, we're going to protect that pass play as well. So it's third and 16. The ball's resting on the Trinity Christians' 36-yard line. Twins to the left side. They're not taking as much time in the huddle, throwing across the middle. Oh, yeah! Almost hit him. Golly, almost hit, intercepted there. Nice little slant by number 17 for Trinity Christian. As I'm down here, I feel like I can actually see the numbers. Uh, our number 11, Greg Houston, man, it hit him right in the chest, oh, man. Jack. It could have hit him in any better place there. Well, it was it was so fast, it hit him in the shoulder pads and bounced straight out in front of him. He just couldn't grab it, but he was stumbling forward. So, at any rate, well, the, the receiver the crossed in front of his face, and then the ball appeared, yeah, too. No doubt, no doubt. Fourth down. So we got Ashley Williams and Noah Dixon back deep for the Tigers. They're on the 30-yard line. Trinity's punter will be on his own 25. There's the kick. Tigers are going to take it. Dixon will fair catch it at about the 21. Let's take 30 seconds back to the station. Tigers leading 21-7 to on Eagle Sports. Hi, I'm Dennis Montgomery, the pharmacist at the Medicine Cabinet on Vernon Street. Everybody knows about our customer service when it comes to the pharmacy. We also do COVID, flu, shingles, and pneumonia vaccines. But do you know about our soda shop and gift shop? We have sodas, milkshakes, floats, and sundaes. And our gift shop has something for all occasions. So come by and see us at the Medicine Cabinet on Vernon Street. Also, visit our other two locations at Lee's Crossing and Moody Bridge Road. Now let's get back to the action. Troop High School Football on the Eagle Sports Network. Welcome back, and here come the Tigers with a first down after a, a nice defensive stop. Trinity Christian going to push us back after we do get about a yard there. Tigers just uh, kind of dipping into the line, trying to get a little bit. Up Williams up behind Big nine. Wade England at center. Picked up about, actually, we really thought it was only about a half yard, but we'll give him two yards, second down. And we'll take that. Clock continues to take 9.50 left to go here in the third quarter play. St. Field will keep it himself up through the line. Weaves in and out. St. Field keeps, and he's going to lose a yard. And finally, he's hit and brought down. Cody Anderson on uh, the again, I, I, as, as I, I feel like uh, the guy that's announcing and us are 
seeing two different things. I thought it'd pick up a couple of yards. He, he did, and, but but you know, hey, it is what it is. Uh, but that'll bring up third down and about six and a half, maybe. Tiger Seafield's trying to make something uh, up the middle happen and uh, give credit for Trinity Christian just closed that middle up. We'll put a man in motion back to the far side. Logan throws it as he's hit. Oh! And just goes in and out of his hands looking for a flag. No flag there. A lot of the, lot of the fans were, were complaining about it, but at the tackle, the attempted tackle happened after it came through uh, Noah Dixon's hands. Uh, Noah had to kind of – now, g- give credit to the Trinity defense, the defensive line, though, is, is uh, Sinkfield was under a lot of pressure, and it left his hand about the time he was hit. Yeah. Of course, Sinkfield now having a conversation with the referee saying, hey, ref, uh, it might be a little uh, little uh, rough in the passer going on. So, referee said, I'll, I'll keep an eye on it. <laughs> For the next time. Yeah. So the Tigers will have to punt the ball away. Logan Moss back to receive. Ben Taylor will stand back there waiting on the snap. On the I'm down here. He's on the 12-yard line. Let's look for another high and long punt. He'll take it. Step up and get the kick. And it's exactly what Greg called for. He reverses his field back there. Now he'll step up, get to the 39-yard line. And that's where Trinity Christian will have it first and 10. Let's take 30 seconds. Return back to the station. To the Tigers lead 21-7 line. on Eagle Sports. As a mom of two boys, it's important to keep my family comfortable year-round, and there's only one name I trust to do so, Ace Air. Ace Air has been keeping our indoor air comfortable and healthy for more than 20 years. Ace Air is the area's only York-certified comfort expert dealer, so you enjoy the best price and warranty. From installations to repairs to air quality, Ace Air is the team that treats your comfort as their top priority. So call Ace to condition your space or visit them online at ace-air.net. Now let's get back to the action. Troop High School Football on the Eagle Sports Network. Welcome back. Here comes Trinity Christian. As they'll get uh, a a, a catch out here about the 40-yard line, but only for a yard, if that. Jeremiah Hort. Actually, they'll lose lose a yard. I tell you, Hort Hort was all over it, son. And uh, Jack, just as soon as he caught the... The receiver caught it. Jeremiah threw him to the ground, and you could just hear the troop fans. That was just like a really good hit. He'll hand off oh, the nice. scrimmage and a big hit there. Jatorian Blackman, <laughs> he six, is fired six. up. Boy, he come through that line, and when that that the tailback hit big sixty six, he bounced backwards. Woo! And Sandy's is going to be stopped. He is line. fired up. And Jatorian's our uh, left tackle. Uh, offensive tackle. He occasionally comes Boy, in on defense on and just, uh, I think he does it just to get fired up. I mean, that, that fired him up, Jack. Look, look, look for us to run behind him when the offense is back on the field. Back to pass, looking, looking. Here comes the pressure. He, he throws it out. Man, what, very deep down there. Falls incomplete. No flag there. Just good coverage. Nice job by Greg Houston. Houston all, all the way, Greg man. He, he took step him. For step. Tight up, tightened up his coverage, Jack, and uh, just bumped him all the way down, went up and broke the pass up. That'll bring up fourth down. Wow, what a defensive stand for the Tigers. I will say that quarterback, though, can throw the ball. Hey, he, he was just under like pressure. A, he just, just whipped like, it. It's like a slingshot. Yeah. He, he just kind of whips it out there. You're right. So Ashton Williams and Noah Dixon will stand back on the 20-yard line to receive this punt. You know, we've been doing a lot of fair catching. It sure would be nice to be able to return one for a minute. Let's see what happens. Sometimes out of out of your mouth comes it into fruition right after that. Hey, here we go. Here's the kick. Bounces. Takes a trendy Christian bounce inside. Actually, on the 20 is where they'll pick it up. And the Tigers will have it there first at 10. Let's keep it here. 21-7 is the score in favor of the Drew High School Tigers. Offense has uh, gone three and out twice already in this third quarter. Well, well, let's see what the Tigers can drum up on, on offense. Had a couple of. Running plays that last time, Ladies and in that last Gentlemen, pass play. Uh, production presents Disney's Finding Nemo Jr. Marlin and so here, here we go, Glisten still fish, um, uh, negotiating his point, if you will, or the debating his point. And he's going to come over here to this side, Panama Judge, and home. he kind of and throws we'll his hand down and discuss like, I can't talk to these guys. He's still, when he comes back, he's I'm going to still try to talk about it. So I'll see if I can get a just figure out what he's talking about. Just got to keep his visor on. That's all I ask. Just keep his visor on. There you go. That's his advisor. 
Logan will put a man in motion. And he'll hand off to that man, who's Ashton Williams, going around the left side. Trinity Christian doing a good job of collapsing on the play. Uh, Terry on Smith, actually, the man in motion. Shoot, that's Terry on, my bad. Yeah, nope, that's all right. And, uh, I saw the hair. You know, that and some of these jerseys just roll up, and it's kind of hard to tell. You're like Javari Fannin's in the backfield, but if you look at his front of his jersey, it looks like it might be a zero, and we know it's not Quay Birdsong because he's, you know, three foot shorter than Quay, I believe. Logan will make the handoff, kind of ride it in there, but they're right on top of it. Not a lot of blocking, blocking that time from the no. offensive line. It, and you, you can just chalk that one up to say, all right, let's try something new because that didn't work at all. I, you know, we, we've seen that off tackle, Greg. They're really running right, right in the middle, and there wasn't a whole lot there. You got Jatorian uh, Blackman, Amorius Purdue, Wade England. Uh, Stephen Davis. But you never know what that's setting up, though. There may be something coming off of that. That's true. Logan rolls. we got a man in his face. Nice he job, escapes nice to go back to the right side. Cuts up field. And he's going to go out of bounds right at the yard marker. It's going to be close. Let's see. I don't know that he made that's a, it. That's a right foot spot, Greg. I think that Sam with the stop. if Let's he see. if he marks him across the the, uh, the the yard mark. Well, we got some coaches um, trying to help him out. Help him out, but he's not listening. They go. They may call for a measurement right here. It's official, right there. Official timeout. They're looking. You don't have to bring it very far to measure this one. Only about three feet off the sideline. The nose of the football's on the 30 First down. First down, Tigers. They don't have to measure. Let's just roll. The nose of the football was placed on the white chalk, so that'll automatically down. bring it 10 yards north. They're going to spot the ball at the 30. That's a first down. So 6 9 left to go here in the third quarter, 21-7. I tell you what, nice job by Logan Sinkfeld to avoid that uh, rush tackle in the backfield as he was able to escape that and pick up 10 yards. They're coming off the end awful quick. Logan will just run the ball himself. Off, off tackle. Pitches nice pitch. it. The pitch is perfect. And we'll pick up right out of – well, a little short of the first down. He picks up five on the no, he'll, pick five. Up, he'll pick up five yards. Nice pitch Sorry, with his left hand by Logan Sinkfield. Nice job. And, and Ashton Williams was able to pick that up. And when he, he slid it, that slid down after a five-yard gain. And a lot of the Trinity Christian fans thought it was a massive hit. But really – Not really. He, he just slid down. Second and five for the Tigers. Maybe actually four and a half if you want to. Yeah. Logan with a pistol set back directly behind him. Quickly, he'll fake the handoff, roll to his right, throws it downfield as a man, and it'll be overthrowing. him. pass is going to be overthrown so at the 30 yard line. He had Braden Atchison behind the corner, but five. his momentum as he was moving toward the Tiger sidelines, his momentum. Kind of helped him overthrow him. He just needs to back off and put a little bit better touch Lions on it. Fans, and but he, Atchison wide open. Well, too, you just have a chance to settle in and make the pass instead of throwing it on the run. Yeah, that that's one of the. I don't. You know, sometimes you you, you think you feel the pressure from the backside, but hopefully that, there was no pressure at that time. Sinkfield turns and throws, and, and no pressure. He just way overthrows his receiver. He, his intended receiver was Davis Munkus out here, and Davis had stepped one yard over the the, the first down marker to the thirty-one yard line, forty-one yard line, and just uh, uh, Sinkfield just kind of had a lot of a lot of um, strength behind that throw, and just kind of overthrew him a little bit. So uh, that's two passes that Sinkfield, when he thinks about it, he's like comes back. Coach Brumblow's having a talk with Logan now on the sideline saying, hey, just take a deep breath, settle down. we got to have those passes. Well, it's like uh, Coach was saying in your interview, it would be nice to go ahead and put these guys away. Well, speaking of putting away, 21-7, to your Tigers still on top, 5-6 left in the third quarter. Low snap, good job by Ben to pick it up like a shortstop. Wow! It was over the head. Of the receiver, and it's going to be pinned back all the way to the 10 yard line. Take a scoop off the ground, Jack. Yep. Ben Taylor, what a nice scoop. Like a shortstop out there. Scooped up one of the very few times we've had a uh, comp, uh, uh, you know, uh, an errant snap. Yeah, an errant snap, and we was able to, and he got it off, and he just flew over the receiver's head, and they had to run back to pick it up. So nice job as as putting Trinity, Trinity Christian back. Deep in their own territory. 5-0-4 here in the third quarter play. Tigers leading 21-7. 
And here comes Trinity Christian. Ball deep in their own territory at the 10-yard line. Quickly back to pass. Swings it out. <laughs> Again, tipped by the Tigers. Quay Birdsong with that long wingspan, arm span, if you will. He reaches out and just brushes the football, throws the trajectory off. Um, wow. Good job. you got to just know that Birdsong is going to be in the backfield 80% of the time. if he can. He's so quick. He's so quick. Again, I'm waiting. We're going to pick off one for this night's over, Greg. Trust me. I hope you're right. Back to pass again. Looking. Throws it way down the field. Nice job by Jeremiah Horde. Horde, once Where again. Tell you what, he's been on the ball all night long. Wow. Broke that pass up. The wide receiver went up to get it. Horde went up with him and just ball bounced off the back of Horde's shoulders. And, but I tell you, that would have been a tough one to catch, Jack. Because Horde was, he was just all on him, just almost bear hugging him. Yep. So third down and 10, ball still on the Trinity Christian's own 10-yard line. Here's where an opportunity to have a turnover would be really nice, Jack. Here comes the snap. Back to pass again. Swings it out and falls incomplete. So they'll be fourth down. Greg Houston on the defensive coverage, but now what that defense just did is now force a punt where Ashton Williams and uh, Noah Dixon will go deep, but now the punter is going to be three to four yards in the end zone, okay? And the Tigers have been uh, – they've been close. They've been close. And the only time that they decided – if you remember, late in the second quarter, we decided not to put pressures when they screwed up their they, punt. They had a bad snap. So, I don't know. Let's see if the Tigers are going to try to do something with this one. They do have three up backs to help to protect him. Good snap, good kick. Not a great kick either, Jack. Taking – no, he's going to return it this time. Up the field and brought down as he gets to the 41-yard line. Great field position for the Tigers. 30 seconds back to station. Tigers leading 21-7 on Eagle Sports. If you need medical treatment at the highest level and want care that's personal, turn to Wellstar. We offer the latest procedures at Georgia's first certified comprehensive cardiac center, along with an innovative approach to fighting cancer, where specialists collaborate to accelerate diagnosis and treatment. We're also home to a top-level stroke program that performs life-saving operations every day. At Wellstar, we care for the whole you. Learn more at wellstar.org. Switching is easy. We do it all the time. We switch on the lights. We switch TV channels. Some of us switch partners while square dancing. Well, that's a stretch. But what's not a stretch is how you can switch and save with State Farm. In fact, State Farm agent Matt Orr right here in LaGrange can switch you over so you can start saving today. Matt and his team are ready to welcome you to the State Farm neighborhood. With Matt Orr, it's easy to switch and save. Just give him a call. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Now let's get back to the action. Troop High School Football on the Eagle Sports Network. Welcome back, and Sinkfield's going to throw an errant pass. It's going to be intercepted and brought down all the way across uh, midfield down to the 30. He had Sinkfield wide open, but again, when you don't throw the football all the time, he threw it a little bit behind him, and Sinkfield sliding down. It bounced off Sinkfield's hand and right into the hands of the defender, and he's able to take it down the sidelines for a nice return all down to about the 30-yard line of the Tigers. So defense back out on the field, Jack. They've done a tremendous job so far tonight. Let's give them another chance now. So great field position. Probably the best field position that uh, they've had tonight from Trinity Christian. Quarterback keeps it. Go around the left side. He'll get about eight, maybe nine yards close to the first down. It's going to be close as I walk down the sideline. Let's see where they're going to mark it out. They're going to mark him about uh, two yards short. No, about a yard short. So it'll be second down and one. So second one for Trinity Christian. Tigers still lead 21-7 with 4-14 left you in the third. After a, they get the ball back after a interception. Tigers try to mix up things in the playbook a little bit. Quarterback going to keep it. Get a first down and more as he goes down inside the 15, down to the 10. They're going to mark him out down at the nine-yard line where they'll right spot of 
uh, left footed. You know, Greg, he's, he's not that he's a pounding runner. He's just running in the right place. Well, he, he's just, yeah, he's, he's not. He's just looking for those little holes and just, just kind of tiptoeing through there, and he picked up first down. So first and goal from the nine-yard line. Waits on a call from the sideline as they slow things down a little bit. They've been running a much more up-tempo offense this second half. Going to throw a corner route. And job it's be, by the defense. Going to be an incomplete pass. pass well, it's, it was complete, but Jeremiah Hoard took him as he went bounds. up yep. and just pushed him out of bounds. He's got to come down in the field of play, and he didn't do that. So Tigers need to hold him. It'll be second and goal from the nine-yard line. They'll, again, they're checking the sideline, get the call from their officials. For their coaches, excuse me, not the official. Quarterback going to try to get to the outside. He's going to lose yardage back Players almost to the 14. Give T.J. Mitchell 100% of that effort uh, as if he stayed at home. The quarterback had actually uh, faked the, the, the jet sweep, tried to take it around to the right side. T.J. Mitchell was standing there waiting on him, had a little help from uh, Tyler Leslie. And uh, that actually goes down as about a uh, – about a seven-yard loss, yeah, Jack. Big loss. Tyler Leslie comes off the field, kind of limping just a little bit, but he'll be okay, I believe. Somebody's calling a timeout. Timeout calling the field. We'll take one as well. Let's take 60 seconds back to the station. Tigers leading 21-7 on Eagle Sports. Hello, folks. My name is Gerald Kemp, owner of Kemp's Dalton West Carpets in Noonan and Peachtree City and Kemp's Carpets in LaGrange. I purchased this airtime on this station to apologize. Yes, that's right, to apologize to all of you listening. You see, when you come into any one of our three stores, you will not find a special can of paint for the bathroom. No washing machines. You see, at Kemp's, we specialize in one thing and one thing only, floor coverage. Kemp's Dalton West Carpets in Noonan, Peachtree City, and Kemp's Carpets in LaGrange, where we do floor coverage. And we do it right. Hi, friends. It's T-O-W-E at Kilograins. Right now, our inventory is so large, it will make our eyes glaze over like donuts. Who doesn't love donuts? This month's feature vehicle is the 23 Kia Sorento. Boy, is it sharp, spunky, funky, and fun to drive. Stop in today and test drive one at 1217 Lafayette Parkway in the beautiful city of LaGrange, Georgia, and find out for yourself. You won't regret it. Shop us online at kilograins.com. Help support your low economy, and God bless America. Now let's get back to the action. Troop High School Football on the Eagle Sports Network. Welcome back. The timeout wasn't a true timeout. It was just an injured player. Actually, it was a ball on the field, and the the side judge back here, uh, Jack, just told these uh, uh, Lions supporters in the end zone to uh, to kind of move back out of the way they had been playing soccer and the ball got on the field. Well, but, hey. But, but that's okay because we get an interception in the midst of it. What a play. The quarterback for Trinity Christian looks to the corner, looks to the corner, throws it at a slant pattern over the middle, and Jalen Reed picks it off two yards in the end zone. Tigers take over on the 20. They'll bring it out there, and Logan Sigfield will step in at the quarterback position. Rolls to, excuse me. Yeah, he'll roll to his right and just running the ball right up the field. He's still on his feet as he gets six, maybe seven out of the play. Wow. He he, he was hit at the 25-yard line and carried three purple jerseys or black jerseys with purple helmets. Another two yards. It'll pick up seven yards. Second down and three for the Tigers. Two minutes and 33 seconds left in the third quarter. Your Tigers 21, the Lions seven. As you know, you, you mentioned that my interview with Coach Glisson as we came back onto the field. He said, man, we – Man, we just need to put these guys away. Well, here's an opportunity to take several minutes off the clock and just drive it down. And, you know, it's kind of like, hey, we've tried that uh, little uh, Noah Dixon pass twice. It hadn't worked. So, uh, as some of the guys are saying, uh, turn the page. Let's keep moving. <laughs> well, let's, you know, let's dance with the ones that brought us. Let's, let's you know, let Logan do his work, work with his feet. Ashton with the ball. Ball's on the ground. Oh, good quick hands by Logan. But he, another uh, bad exchange between him and Javari Fanning, but Logan's able to jump down on it. It did lose about three yards. It'll be third down and nine, uh, maybe four yards. But, uh, whew, again, that's twice that that's happened, Jack, in this ball game, and twice Logan Sinkfield has uh, been able to pounce on it. So third down now. Tigers look back to the sideline. Third and about nine. Twins to this near side. 
Minute 20. Clock continues to tick. Down to 14 seconds on the play clock. Logan will call for it. And he's going to run the ball. Goes to the outside. Nice block ahead of him. He'll be taken out of bounds as he crosses the 30, but that'll be enough for the first down. 31. Yeah, he only had to get to the 30-yard line. They should move the chains. Let's see what happens. Yep, moving the chains. Roll baby. First down, Tigers. So that took the clock down to 54 seconds. Continues to tick. 21-7. And again, getting through this quarter without allowing Trinity Christian to score is a big deal, Greg. No doubt about it. Uh, 21-7 at halftime. Still 21-7. Kind of a tough third quarter, really, for both teams offensively. Yeah, just uh, drawing back to the fourth. Handoff into the line. Getting down to near the 35. Fanning Javari Fanning, Fanning takes a handoff, a goes up behind, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Isaiah Hall and uh, Jatorian Blackman, picks up about four yards, second down and six. And uh, I think Coach Glisson was telling him, hey, hey, just let the clock run down, and we're going to change ends of the field as the quarter's about to come to an end. So that's the end. Last play of this quarter. Ah, oh, that's it. They're bringing water on the field. At 21-7, it's your score as we go into the fourth. Hold those hands up high with four fingers because we're going to the fourth quarter of play. So again, Trim County 21 and Trinity Christian 7. Let's take 60 seconds back to the station and listen to Trim County Tiger football on Eagle Sports. Hi, everybody. Welcome back here to Holmes Pharmacy. I'm here with Perry Prather. And, Perry, if your feet hurt or your legs are tired, there's some products out there that can help you. Absolutely, Coleman. We um, have a one of the largest selections that I know in maybe 50 miles of, of support stockings, compression hose, um, any orthotic uh, products that we can help with your legs and your feet, whatever, to get the swelling out of your legs, come by and give us a shot. Look at our extensive line of hose. There you go. Come find them right here at Hamilton, Commerce Avenue, and inside the Piggly Wiggly. It's homespharmacy.com. As a mom of two boys, it's important to keep my family comfortable year-round, and there's only one name I trust to do so, Ace Air. Ace Air has been keeping our indoor air comfortable and healthy for more than 20 years. Ace Air is the area's only York-certified comfort expert dealer, so you enjoy the best price and warranty. From installations to repairs to air quality, Ace Air is the team that treats your comfort as their top priority. So call Ace to condition your space or visit them online at ace-air.net. Now let's get back to the action. Troop High School Football on the Eagle Sports Network. Fresh set of minutes, 12 of them to be exact. I'll separate this to the end of the ball game. 21-7 is your score in favor of the Troop High School Tigers. Let's take a look at a couple other scores real quick as the teams come back on the field. LaGrange right now leading Fayette County 35 to 13. Whitewater over Riverdale 42 to nothing. Stars Mill over North Clayton 41 to 0. And of course 21 7 here in this contest. We go around the region there. To the Tigers. Wow. Jack, well, almost a broken play. Well, it was a broken play. It was a broken play, and we pick up the yardage that we need for a first down. High snap. Sinkfield comes down, tries to hand it off to Fanning, but he Fanning's on the wrong side, or either Linkfield, uh, Sinkfield's facing the wrong way when he comes down from that high snap from Wade England, but he's able to take it down and grab a hold of Javari Fanning's shirt, and you know Javari Fanning's going to create some holes, and he picks up a first down uh, for the Tigers out to the 45-yard line. You know, talking to Bob Schweitzer down here, uh, former athletic director and now a uh, assistant principal at the uh, Troop High, we was talking, hey, what we need now, Jack, is about a six to seven minute, just keep it on the ground, pound it out, and uh, put it in the end zone. Tigers will split a man wide to the steer side, slot receiver to the steer side. Again, the problem with the snap, Logan, got to get on it. Well, it, it, hit him, it hit him in a bad place. It hit him in his hands, hands. yep. And it was one of those snaps from Wade England that, I mean, he it came back fast. Got an injured uh, lion. He's able to get back up off the field. Number 36 is slowly trotting off the field. But, yeah, that'll uh, that'll about six yards. It'll be second down and 16, maybe 15 for the Tigers. That's an unforced error, Greg. That's uh, second and 15 now. So, Glisson's calling Sinkfield over with plenty of time on the play clock. Just saying, hey, uh, settle down. It's okay. But uh, you got to make sure that. Wade uh, England does a nice job of that snap. That came flying back there, and it kind of popped off his hands. But Sinkfield's also got to keep his eye on that snap as well. 
Think they're going to run right up in the middle behind those big linemen and get hit at the line of scrimmage. Good job by Trinity Christian as they're shutting the running game down. Well, I, I really thought on this left side here with Ben Taylor and Jatorian Blackman and uh, Stephen Davis, we had a kind of had a couple of holes, but just as soon as Sinkfield got to the to the uh, line of scrimmage, we had a linebacker pop through there. So that go down as no gain. Third, actually losses. So instead of third and sixteen, it's third and twenty. So. Big play here for the Tigers. We're talking about needing to hold on possession of that football. So 16 yards, actually third and 20. So let's see what we can do. Sinkfield takes it, runs this near side. Caught from behind and brought down for another loss. Sinkfield's looking. He's looking downfield for that um, that opportunity, and the guy catches him from behind. So, uh Nothing Sinkfield can do about that. He's hoping he's got blockers out in front of him, but what you don't anticipate is a guy coming from the backside, and he was on a full blown blitz. So he just caught up with Sinkfield as Sinkfield's trying to poke his way through on the right side. So it'll be about fourth down and 22. 20, yep. The ball's resting on the 33 yard line. So Ben Taylor will probably stand somewhere around the 19 or 20 yard line for this punt. Need another good one. Uh, you, you took the words right out of my mouth, Jack. We need a. One is high and long, and and we have some good coverage, too. We're going to get a delay of game if we're not quick. Hike, ah, we're good. Ben gets the kickoff. Bounces down. And fair caught. Just shy of the 40, about the 39. Tigers continue to lead 21-7, 844. You know, Greg, we still got, you know, 3 315 off the clock with that drive, even though we didn't go anywhere. 844 left in this football game, right, or at so least the in the fourth quarter. 21 to 7, your Tigers on top. You're right, Jack. And both teams still with three timeouts left. Um, so didn't use any in the, th- in the third quarter. It was a kind of a defensive struggle in the third quarter. A couple of mistakes by the Tigers almost let the, the Lions score, but then an interception by Jalen Reed. And so we got a, uh, the side, the back judge here is going to call a timeout. Actually, the Tigers have to take a timeout because I think we got somebody that's not ready. So they take one. We'll take one as well. 60 seconds. Back to station. Tigers leading 21-7 on Eagle Sports. WLAGAM LaGrange and W245AW LaGrange. Troop High School Football is brought to you by Holmes Pharmacy. At Wellstar West Georgia Medical Center, we believe teamwork makes all the difference in your health. We believe that skilled people can achieve higher standards and exceptional results. We believe in a game plan that's focused on patient safety and quality care. At Wellstar West Georgia Medical Center in LaGrange, we believe in life well lived. To learn more about award-winning health care, visit wellstar.org slash westga. You've changed thousands of diapers, cut off hundreds of crusts, played hours of peekaboo and duck duck goose because you'd do anything for your kids. That's why it's so important to protect them with life insurance from State Farm. State Farm agent Matt Orr will make it easy and affordable to help you protect your family, no matter what the future holds. Because for the people you'd do anything for, life insurance could mean everything. Call State Farm agent Matt Orr in LaGrange today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Now let's get back to the action. Troop High School Football on the Eagle Sports Network. Welcome back to Troop High School Tiger Football. First Swing pass stop, on first down. down we'll by Trinity Christian. We'll pick them up, up eight yards, second down and two. Not what we wanted to, to be charged with a timeout as Jalen Reed was uh, on the sideline. Uh, they did charge uh, Trinity Christian is what the announcer said. I'm not sure uh, if that's what happened. He's not right. Is he just, wrong again? Yeah, he's, he's wrong again. Okay. Well, you know, the back judge pointed toward Troop High. So, I, all I can tell you about. Ball goes on the ground. Troop Tiger football. The Tigers have gotten on it. Who comes up with it? It looks like they got a Hey, it's uh, Jeremiah Horde. So wow, he, what a game he's having. Did you baby. see what they did, Greg? They, they, they had a man in motion who sneaks County. up under center to try to take it, like, for a quarterback sneak. And the exchange is lost there. And so the Tigers will have the ball. Actually, Javari Fanning from his linebacker position. Got an quarterback, at, no, number two. Their big, tall, wide receiver. Um, now I'm going to see just how tall he is because he's down here on the field. He's having trouble getting up. But he kind of ducked in under center to take the ball and, and just get a quarterback sneak in. And 
Uh, it snuck up and knocked him down. Well, you know, it seems like a couple of coaches trying to – a couple of little trickery plays as, as uh, the, all they needed was like a yard for a first down but turned around and backfired on them. So, uh, we may have an injury timeout now, Jack. He's having a tough time getting off the field, getting up off the ground. Let's take 30 seconds back to the station while they check on this young person. 21-7 is your score. Favor the Troop High School Tigers on Eagle Sports. Hello, folks. My name is Gerald Kemp, owner of Kemp's Dalton West Carpets in Noonan and Peachtree City and Kemp's Carpets in LaGrange. I purchased this airtime on this station to apologize. Yes, that's right, to apologize to all of you listening. You see, when you come into any one of our three stores, you will not find a special can of paint for the bathroom. No washing machines. You see, at Kemp's, we specialize in one thing and one thing only. Floor covers. Kemp's Dalton West Carpets in Noonan, Peachtree City, and Kemp's Carpets in LaGrange, where we do floor covers. We do it right. Now let's get back to the action. Troop High School Football on the Eagle Sports Network. 7.58 left to go in this contest. 21-7. Tigers get the ball back after a fumble by Trinity Christian as they tried a little trickery to get two yards. Again, just an odd, odd play call when all you need is two yards and you've been pretty effective with the quarterback just running it. But I guess in open field, they didn't want to try it again. Sometimes offense coordinators think a little bit too many levels of three-dimensional chess. 21-7 for the Tigers right now. 7.58 left to go. No scoring at all in the second half so far. Let's hope the Tigers can change that and put some points on the board. Ball arrest just across the 50 at the 46, 47. St. Phil will call for it. And they're in the backfield as soon as we hand the ball off. I think they're doing some of the same things that we're doing. It's like uh, on the sidelines here talking to Jeff Walker and was talking about He said, you know, he said, that defense is a little bit better than we really give him credit for being. I said, well, you know, that's one of those things that you got, you still got high school, but. Our offensive line really needs to uh, step it up this last seven and a half minutes of this ball game because that um, the, just the interior line is where a lot of this stuff is coming from. So that's just an interior stunt. Just came between a, a, a guard center or guard t- guard uh, tackle gap. Now uh, you can see the the Tiger offensive strategies to drain that clock, kind of uh, start the Stars Mill way. <laughs> that, that they were very effective against us. Man in motion to the outside. We'll swing it out to him. Up the sideline. Going out of bounds. They're going to mark him out at the 46-yard line. He'll pick up probably about nine yards, but uh, he still needs about six yards for the – actually more like nine yards. Nine yards to 39. Yeah, so 39 for the Tigers. He's got to get down to the uh, 37-yard line. Maybe 36-and-a-half-yard line is where they've got to go. 21-7 21-7 in favor of the Tigers. 6.59 left to go in this contest. Singfield back to pass. Looking, got some time. Throws it downfield and overthrows his intended receiver. Noah Dixon, who's aiming for. He had Noah on a slant, but he also he also had Atchison down the sidelines that, that really his corner, once, once Logan had looked toward Dixon, number 24, the corner had bit toward Dixon, leaving Atchison wide open. It's uh, – you know, it's those kind of little nuances when you watch film. You know, you, that, to me, when that's going way back when I watched him like as a player, I look for little tendencies ben like Taylor that because even though your game. mind's thinking Noah Dixon's there, Ball, once you Patrick look at Noah, team. Atchison becomes available. You, you know, just little things like that. But at any rate, Ben Taylor standing on the 40-yard line. He'll punt the ball. Hopefully we can land it inside the 10 and stay there. He gets his kick off. All right, so the ball's going to land on about the nice kick, nice kick, a roll by the, for the Tigers inside the 10. I tell you what, he has been so effective today of pinning them back. They're going to down it at the 9.5-yard line. 6.35 left in the fourth quarter, 21-7. to Your Tigers on top. That's second or third of the punt that he's gotten down inside the 10-yard line tonight. Now, this is where the defense uh, has, has, you know, Obviously, we've scored one more time. Uh, kickoff Let's return, 88 yard kickoff return, and two to offensive Hattie. touchdowns. But the defense birthday. has really been Hattie setting birthday, the tone in the second half. And you know what we need them to do? Is continue to set that tone right now. 6.35 left to go. Tiger defense needs to 
rise up one more time here. And here comes Trinity Christian. They'll put a man in motion to the right side. Quarterback, lots of time. Airs it out down the middle of the field. Well, It'll fall incomplete. And, guys, we're, we're just not getting the pass rush on him. Actually, they're going to throw a flag on interference on Jeremiah Horde as uh, he, he got about 10 yards down the field and he did a hitch and go. And so Jeremiah tried to grab him. Noah's already saying something to Jeremiah, but that'll be a automatic first down. It actually, from with the spot of the foul, that'll definitely move the ball out beyond uh, the 20. A 15-yard penalty is going yep. to be a first down. Ball will be placed up at the 25-yard line, first and 10 Lions. So from inside the 10 to the 9-and-a-half out to the about the 24-and-a-half-yard line. Ter- uh, not a time to have that kind of penalty. 6.30 remaining in the fourth quarter. Ball still inside the tw- inside the 30-yard line. Man in motion, quarterback. Airs it out again down the middle of the field. Just in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. Actually, a great pass. He just pass hit his hands and just a little bit too far away. Well, and, and Hort had him uh, pushing him on the sidelines. When I say pushing him, he was – he was hip to hip with him, but he was moving him toward the sideline. So if he had a caught it uh, at my vantage point, Jack, and I know you're you're up in the booth and can see, but you were we was also right in front of the, the players on the sidelines on Trinity Christian sidelines. Not sure that would have been complete. So uh, I'm gonna give credit for Jeremiah for the, to coming back on that play. That'll be fine. I'll agree with that. Quarterback gonna keep it. Cut back inside. Hit hard. And nice job by Dorian Brooks, a nose tackle, as Big 44 chased that t- uh, quarterback down yet again tonight and uh, wouldn't let him get it out of his grip. And they come along T.J. Mitchell on the help. So it'll bring up third down and about 11, maybe 12. Yeah, they'll lose a yard or so. About a yard and a half, third and 11 and a half. All right, so we've got uh, Tigers calling a second timeout. Actually, uh Timeout. They still hadn't charged the Tigers with a timeout, so timeout the if they do, then that'll be the first timeout of the half for the Tigers. Well, this will be a, be a timeout, timeout against the Tigers. They'll take it. We'll take one, two. 60 seconds back to the station. 21 to 7 on Eagle Sports. Hey, Lions fans, love to tell you more about Project Lions. Yo, the shirt down. Mm-hmm. At Mud Creek Graphics, we have over 26 years of experience bringing you the best in apparel printing. Our exceptional graphic artists will work with you to create beautiful custom-designed T-shirts for any occasion. That's not all. Mud Creek Graphics is there for you for the printing of banners and signs. They'll get your message across to everyone. We love to support our local schools every year. So for your custom signs, banners, embroidery, and more, like Mud Creek Graphics on the Book of Faces, visit us at our new location, 2219 West Point Road. Hey, I'm Jody Ward, and I'm excited and thankful about joining the Medicine Cabinet family. I bring over 30 years of local community pharmacy experience to the Medicine Cabinet. It is a pleasure and privilege for me to serve our community in the prettiest pharmacy in Troop County. You will find our excellent staff willing and ready to serve all of your health care needs. Come and see us for all of your vaccines and and we will soon be starting our comprehensive therapy management services program. Come visit us at the beautiful Lace Cross End location. Now let's get back to the action. Troop High School Football on the Eagle Sports Network. Welcome back. And the Tiger defense picking up where they left off. Tyler left. Jack comes off that left edge and just slams the quarterback down for a 10-yard loss. That'll be all the way back to the 15-yard line. 524 left to go in this contest. 21-7 in favor of the Tigers. The the hey, I'm line. getting an update. 51-48, to 48, Fayette County over LaGrange. Is, is that a believable score? I think it is if you flip it to LaGrange over Fayette County. But 51-48? to 48? Really? Hold on, let me see what I got. As there's the kick. No, no, um, I do know that Fayette County had scored. Is going to roll That's a lot of scores, though. A while ago, you reported That's like 40, 35 to 14 or something. Well, wait a minute. This is saying 51-48 Fayette County is what I'm getting off my That's head. That's what we're seeing on the sidelines here. Unbelievable if that's, a, if that's a true score. Oh, my Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked if that's, that's the case. That's a horse of a different color. We'll check on that in a minute and see if we can get uh, confirmation from our own sources. 
All right, so. Tigers with the ball, 453. And they've got 50 yards to pay dirt, 453, right at just under five minutes. You know what? Sure would be nice to score, Jack, with about a minute left in this ball game. Love the idea. There's a snap. Logan will hand the ball off. We'll get a nice four or five yards off of that. Second down. It'll be second down. They're going to give him about maybe three to four yards. But, again, the clock runs as the, as the uh, ground, game, ground game continues. Let's see that offensive line. I see Wade England. I just Stephen gave him Davis. two on the play. Wow. Isaiah Hall. I see Jatorian Blackman. And who else is over there? Amarius, Amarius Purdue. That's your offensive line that we need to lean on heavily. Keep pounding out this uh, three yards in a cloud of rubber. Continuing on the ground. Fighting down to about the 45. That'll gain three. It'll be third down and five for the Tigers. That's going to bring up a third down and five. Tigers on the 45-yard line of Trinity Christian. Clock continues to run. Just under four minutes left in this fourth quarter. Your Tigers, 21. Trinity Christian Lions, seven. 35, as Greg said. Tigers continue to lead 21-7. You know, I know a lot of fans would like to think it may be over, but the fat lady's not even humming no, right you, now, so there's a ways you, to go in this ball game. You keep playing. Tigers are doing a good job at draining the play clock down. They're down to eight seconds, and hopefully they'll snap it around three or four. Yep. There's the handoff on the, on the left side. Get back to the line of scrimmage and just a yard after that. Fourth down now. Ashton Williams on the, the carry. Unfortunately, like you said, didn't really do anything. Um, but, you know, I don't see anything happening with the punt team. So, fourth down for the Tigers. And they may – they may uh, – they still – they're showing one timeout left. I believe that timeout was charged to the Tigers early on and just now just getting registered. They've got one timeout left. They're showing Trinity with three timeouts left. And I'm getting the thumbs up by the back. That's correct. Tigers with one timeout left. Okay, yep. So, let's see. The Tigers will try to draw them off. They'll t- they'll take the delay a game and punt the football. I'll go back down here inside the 10 to see what Ben Taylor can do. So, that's exactly what happens. Delay a game. Offense. So, they'll bring out the punting team. Okay, a, a good effort, good try. We're down to 2.30 left on the play clock, I mean, left on the clock yeah. for the game. 39-13, LaGrange, or 35-13. You know, like, there's enough uh, hackers out there. They're uh, hacking the app, if you will. I fixed to say that just didn't sound right at all. Yeah. Like, like no. If the <laughs> Whoever's hacking it, come on, man. Get off the smelling sauce and do it right. right that's a delay. That's Can't unbelievable. Tanner back to punt for Cruz <laughs> County. Logan Ball's on the receive. Really? <laughs> for the Lions. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can get another nice punt off. High snap. Tigers got a good coverage. The 19-yard line, Jack. Yep, a fair catch called for there. 30 okay, seconds. So back to the station. Let's go ahead and take our, one more break. 21-7 in favor of the Tigers on Eagle Sports. It's fall, y'all. Tis the season for feed and football. At Eagle Radio, we have football covered, and the people at Lee's Crossing Feed and Farm have all your needs for feed covered with a great selection of quality food, plot mixes, bird feed, deer feed, combat chicken feed, pet food and feeders. Lee's Crossing Feed and Farm also carries Aryans and full lawnmowers, boutique items for the ladies, custom cowboy and cowgirl hats, and a lot more for the indoors and outdoors. Visit Lee's Crossing Feed and Farm today, located on West Point Road next to to Charlie Josephs. Now let's get back to the action. Troop High School Football on the Eagle Sports Network. Welcome back. The Troop High School Tigers are leading 21-7 as we're in the fourth quarter play. Only two minutes and 18 seconds left to win this contest. You know, that incomplete pass to their wideout, that'll stop the clock. Like you said, 21-7, your Tigers on top. Um, Nope. They hadn't even set the play clock yet, Jack. Nope. Taking their time. Back to pass once again. Got some pressure. Rolls out to his right. Looking, throws it downfield. That little slingshot arm. Almost picked off. Oh, my gosh. Nice job by Greg Houston. That's twice in a row Greg's done a Ugh. heck of a job defending. It was under a lot of pressure from Tyler Leslie. And uh, 
that kicked Tyler outside. The quarterback came underneath Tyler and was, was motioning his, his wide out to go deep. And Greg Houston wasn't going to have anything of it. Um, that incomplete pass stops the clock with 2.08 left in the fourth 10. quarter. Your Tigers 21, the Lions 7. They're back up the line of scrimmage again. Third down now. Back to pass. Here comes the pressure. Slings that here and falls incomplete through it. Again, under his intended receiver. Over toward Jeremiah Hord's way. I, I told Jeremiah and uh, Greg, man, they've been playing a well of a ball game. Passes uh, was, was where it's supposed to be. The wide out when he turned, slipped down. And, you know, I'm down here in my short pants and uh, uh, quarter zip. It's starting to get a little uh, dewy on the field, if you will, and that might have had a little something to do with it. Two minutes left as the play, as the clock stops. It'll bring up fourth down and ten. And guess what? As they need to, they're going for it. Oh, yeah. Well, you, you have to at this point. Trips to this near side. Back to pass. Incomplete. Yeah, so it's incomplete. All right. This is, this and is where the uh, Tiger needs to take over and score this time. They'll pick up the ball. Uh, they'll take over on the 20-yard line, Jack. You know, at, the, at the rate they're going, if we just get a first down, the ball game's pretty much over. Well, you're right. And, see, Trinity Christian has three timeouts left. And the question remains, when we got the ball on the 20-yard line inside the red zone, does, does Trinity actually use their timeouts? Good you know, question. I mean, you know, if they, if they could somehow – because hopefully the Tigers aren't going to do anything, obviously, out of the way other than run the football. So, no trickery. Anything well, like that happening t- now. Yeah. Trinity Christian has been very strong in, in the running game. Well, if, if they even even if they do stop the Tigers in their running game, they, they go, they're about to use three timeouts left. And then the Tigers can kick a field goal, or at least attempt to kick we a field goal. We have the ability, yep. Yep. Noah will stand in there and take the ball. Rolls to his right, puts a hand in the man's face. Down inside the 15. Down oh. the, wow. Just bulldozed the guy. As he tries to take him out of bounds, that was a, that was a mistake. Noah Dixon from the Wildcat takes the football and runs and makes a first down, but they're just going to lay the markers down. It'll be a left foot spot, but it's first and goal from the 10-yard line. And wow. when I say first and goal, it's really the nose of the football is on the 10, so they've got 10 yards in the nose of a football. Noah will stand in there again. There's a snap to him, and he'll run behind his blocking. Cuts inside. Noah tries to take it to him, but a linebacker and uh, actually two linebackers hit Noah hard. It'll pick him right inside the 10. Actually, it was more of a one, but they're going to give him two yards spot. They're gonna move, no, they're going to move it back to the nine. So uh, second and goal. Timeout was called. A minute 38 left to go. They'll take a timeout. We'll take one as well. Just 30 seconds back to the station. 21-7 troop on Eagle Sports. Waltrip Steel's goal is to bring affordable metal pricing to the surrounding areas. Located at 2418 Veterans Memorial Parkway in Lynette, Waltrip Steel sells to the general public as well as commercial and industrial businesses. They offer roofing panels, commercial roofing, and complete building packages. In addition, Waltrip Steel provides all types of galvanized stainless and black metal. Give them a call today at 334-630-1117. 334-630-1117. For all your steel needs, large or small, Waltrip Steel. Now let's get back to the action. Troop High School Football on the Eagle Sports Network. Welcome back to Troop High School Tiger Football. Tigers lead 21-7 with a minute 38 left to go in this contest. Right now we're trying to drive inside and maybe put one more score on the board. Second and goal from right inside the 10. Noah Dixon will stand in there in the Wildcat quarterback position. A little bit of a high snap, takes it. Follows his blocking down to the five, still on his feet. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Tiger. Noah Dixon looked like he was in the track meet doing in the hurdle, and he just hurdles two guys at the five-yard line, takes it into the right side of the end zone. Tigers go up 27-7, which will basically put a nail in this coffin. Yeah, I think that's going to about do it. As Parker Townsend drops a knee down on the 10-yard line, and McCarty Harrelson awaits the opportunity to kick this PAT. Tigers doing a good job of coming to do business tonight. Exactly what they needed to do. Kick is up, and the kick is good. 28-7 so is your score. you all can breathe now. It's okay. Let's take a deep breath. 
Tigers going to come away victorious in this football game. I, I can't imagine some miracles happening to the tune of three touchdowns in, I, in I, 90 seconds. No, I don't. I don't see it. Uh, <laughs> we have got confirmation from uh, our, our buddy Brendan that Lagrange is still leading that game, uh, 48 to uh, 13. Say it again. Was it 48, Joe? 49 13? Yeah, 49 13. 49 13, Lagrange. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the game's probably about over, too. So, uh, yeah, with some of the online sources, we're not reliable. I know that's hard to believe that an online source would not be reliable. But from time to time, you can't believe what you read on the internet. Bump back to receive for the Lions. Minute 30 left to go as the Tigers get ready to kick off once again. Kickoff coverage is important. Now we need to make sure that we're on this and make the tackle. No doubt about it. But, um, you know, the lines have got people deep, but it's highly unlikely we're going to kick it in the air. Boom, right across the ground. Bam, it goes up in the air. Taking at about the 25 up. A nice return for Trinity Christian. This is something we're going to need to work on as it gets all the way up to the 45. It takes eight seconds off the clock. They still have two timeouts. Tigers have one. Troop 28, Trinity Christian Lions 7. Williams on the stop for Troop County. First down and 10, Lions. Yeah, just got a confirmation text from Chandler Wilkerson, also uh, the play-by-play guy for LaGrange. Uh, 49-13 is the score there. Okay, I think we thoroughly investigated this. Well, Max, Max Preps is, still has Fayette County leading 53. Well, Max and his preps are wrong. They, they have prepped us in, incorrectly, I think. They need to, they need to check for uh, see if they've been uh, hacked. Trent Christian will put a man in motion back to the other side, give trips on the right. Ten seconds on the play clock. Quarterback, back to pass, throws it short. Falls incomplete right Player at the 50. Incomplete to Middlebrook. Horde on the, on the – uh, defense but you know that that play i'm standing behind the quarterback's trajectory and he the wide receiver an opportunity catch he threw it right at his it kind of bounced up to it that'll stop the clock team left once again back to pass same play and the tigers are right on top of it wow jeremiah horde what a game he's had tonight he's uh as soon as he catches, he throws the guy to the ground. So, Jeremiah and that good thing is, Jack, the clock continues to run. Yep. The guy cut quickly to the line of scrimmage. We're under a minute now. Back to pass again. Throws to the outside. Nice job by Terrion Smith, Jack, as he uh, down, that big out route. He's able to. Down. Put his left hand on the shoulder pad and his right hand to deflect the football. Yep. Excellent coverage by Go, Terry on Smith. Going for the ball, so that brings up fourth down, and of course, no punting team. 48 <laughs> seconds left in this ball game. Tigers not putting anybody back deep. Oh, well, not even any, just playing normal defense. You're right, not punting the football. And Quay Birdsong. Uh, is as intense as he is. Defense. He's wanting to get in that backfield so bad. Still that'll cost down. him five. Still not enough for the first down. That's going to bring up a fourth down and one after the penalty. Fourth and one. 48 seconds. All right, here they go. Trips again right side. Man wide to the steer side. Quarterback goes under center. For some reason, runs the quarterback sneak Players to get the first down. For a first down. Well, I guess he th- will th- stop the clock while they're adjusting the chains and trying to get everybody. Oh, and now the referee's winding the clock. So if Trinity Christian wants to do anything, they got two timeouts left, but they're not using them. It's, yeah. a, it's a running play, so you, you got to keep going. Back to pass again. Just throws it way up in the high, high in the air. And it's going to be caught, steps out of bounds, back at the 20. Yeah, he does catch it. 19 seconds left. As soon as they uh, set the chains, the referee will wind his arm, and that will start the clock. But So um, yeah, the Tigers would like to keep him out of the end zone, but it's not going to matter one way or the other. The Tigers are going to come away victorious tonight. There's the snap. 
Back to pass. Here goes a little pressure, throws it. Across the middle. Complete and caught and a touchdown. What's going on? Hmm? No, we've got Trinity Christian guy uh, through uh, through one of the troop players. Dan, he may have knocked him out. We've got some serious situation here on the field. The Trinity Christian guy would just jumped on top of him, started hitting one of our guys in the back of the helmet. And the the players and all out there trying to, the coaching staff trying to figure out what's going on. We've got an injured player on the field. Wow. I looked up and saw uh, one of the Trinity Christian players just jumping on one of our guys and hitting hitting them in the back of the helmet. Not, not pretty. And our our coaches are very upset. Oh, it it was not pretty at all. I, I, I was looking at the end zone, missed it. Trainers from both teams again coming out to check on him. Tried to get him up, but I see he's moving a little bit. But he was a little bit lethargic to start with. So, uh, and I uh, want to say, was, I can't check his number. Uh, no, that was Quay Birdsong. They was retaliating on Quay for some reason. Uh, let's see what the, I'd love to hear what the coaches are saying. I would assume it's an apology. From yeah. the head coach of Trinity Christian. Doesn't look like it. Hope it is, but well, I don't know that. I don't know that. Uh, Glisten's <laughs> trying to walk away, and the coach wouldn't let him. So I can't say that uh, it was the best apology ever. But then, what do I know? I'm 30 yards from it. 13 seconds left. The head coach of Trinity still pleading his case with the referee. All right, they're going to bring the Tigers in, take a knee. Uh, 13 seconds left in this ball game. Still very animated conversation between the head coach and the referee. Still hadn't put the, uh, the touchdown on the board. And since it was on the same play, it was, it was, the flag was thrown at or about the time of the touchdown, it may be negated. Since he hadn't put it on, maybe he's waiting on an official, official to make the calling. Well, it's just it's frustrating. Greg. The, the game's not in question. We're here at the end of the thing, and now we have controversy like this. Just a, just a bonehead play by a young man. Yeah. Let's just talk to him about how to settle down, and, and uh, let, let's see what they let's see what what's going to happen. Are we going to play this game out at 13 seconds, or what's going on? I'll see if I can get some kind of information on it. What happened? It's got a microphone. Let's cut it on and tell us what's happening. Well, what what I'd be curious is, will it negate the touchdown because it happened on the same play? A head coach is still coming over here trying to talk to Glisten from 40 yards away, and I don't know what all that what what what's he's trying to achieve by doing that. Well, you would, you would think that uh, sportsmanship is an important part of any program, but especially here on the campus of Trinity Christian. Hey. <laughs> I'm amongst the players. I need to cut my mic down a little bit. Here we go. The result of the play, the touchdown. After the play was over, personal foul on the scoring team. And the player is disqualified. All right, so they have ejected the player. Well, he'll also be next week as well. Uh, but that will put a touchdown on the board. Again, we said before the play was, really doesn't matter if they score or not. The game's over anyway. The Tigers are going to come away victorious. But, you know, uh, wow. We are hoping the cooler heads prevail here on this, this play. All right, so after the touchdown, we had a... After the ball, personal foul. Troop County has decided to take it on the kickoff on the penalty. So the priest will be on for the PAT. Yeah, so we're going to take the penalty on the take and the kickoff. So let's see. Um, be nice to. Uh, we might not even run it back. We may take a knee and then take a knee on offense. 
Kick is up. The kick is good. And Depreece's PAT is good. So with right. 13 seconds to go so in the game. So they've, they've closed in a little bit. 28-14 with 13 seconds. But let's go ahead and take a 30-second break. When we come back, we'll close this thing out from Trinity Christian on Eagle Sports. Rogers Barbecue and Catfish House, a southern tradition since 1945, where we only serve U.S. farm-raised catfish. And now you can order online on Facebook or just type Rogers Barbecue LaGrange on your Google search engine and order right there. Then pick it up and enjoy it for the office, your family, or just you. Rogers Barbecue and Catfish House is open Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. on New Franklin Road in LaGrange. Or just search on Google... Rogers Barbecue and Catfish House in LaGrange. Now let's get back to the action. Troop High School Football on the Eagle Sports Network. Welcome back. 28-14 is the score with 13 seconds left to go in this contest. They've backed up Trinity Christian. Callaway a winner tonight as well, 58 to uh, Han- six Hanley, or 12, I'm not sure. Hanley legend David Kelly and I are and Troop Touchdown can't. Club member. We were talking, what do we do, what do we do? I just think we take a knee and then take another knee and get out of here without any injuries and let's, uh, let's take this thing home. It is a live ball, though. We do have to, we do have to get on it. Got, got to field it. Nice. We, so, we do. So good job by Garrison. He'll pick up the football on the 24-yard line is where they should mark it. So all Garrison Edwards, uh, nice job as that ball hit the air and it started hammering toward. uh, He had to dive down on it. Yeah. He did a nice job um, uh, with that. And I'm going to check to see. uh, But I want to say Garrison is a uh, sophomore. A good job with a lot of pressure to come with that football as a sophomore. So Tiger no should take a knee as Noah Dixon will be kind of the safety sitting back on about the 15-yard line. Big win for the Tigers tonight against Trinity Christian. Interesting enough as Logan Sinkfield's in the shotgun position. Well, that's, that's kind nice of what we run. Just, let, just stand there for a little bit and let the clock run out. Now he takes a knee. And but that should Cruz be it, though. Take yep. Here yep. The Two, clock will run. Your Tigers one. are going to be victorious. Score, All right. Tigers, Tigers, a big winner tonight, 28-14 over Trinity Ladies Christian. One game in the regular season left, and it's tonight. going to be a big one. As the Tigers will take the on the LaGrange High School here. Grangers next Richard week to see game, how this region is going to shake big out. Wow. As you and I were talking coming up here, though, Jack, this is the first time that Troop and LaGrange game has meant something of this proportion in a long time. Uh, many, many, many years. You and I have been doing this a long time. And, we, you know, the Tigers won the region champ, uh, was region champions last year. It's going to be a big game next week because depending on the, the scoring situation and who beat who, uh, you know, it could be uh, Troop certainly got a win to be the region champion since we uh, beat these guys by 14 points. So we covered the spread there earlier where uh, Stars uh, Trinity Christian beat Stars Mill. So we got that covered. We just need to beat LaGrange. And if – you know, is there an opportunity for either team to win the region next week? I don't know. We'll all discuss that during Monday night's radio show, live from Your Pie Pizza at 730. You guys, if you can't be there, listen to us on Eagle Sports Network. All right, we'll take a break. With you. We'll come back let Greg get a chance to talk with Coach Glisson. We'll close things out here from Sharpsburg, Georgia. The Tigers have won by a score of 28-14 on Eagle Sports. Start the new school year off right with a new haircut for you and your kids. With two great locations to choose from. Sawmill Place in the Piggly Wiggly Shopping Center off Roanoke Road and the Commerce Avenue location next to Kroger. Great Clips saves your haircut details so you can get the same great haircut every time from any Great Clips. Save the time with convenient online check-in. Download the app today. Sawmill Place in the Piggly Wiggly Shopping Center off Roanoke Road and the Commerce Avenue location next to Kroger. Great Clips. It's going to be great. Perry Prather here with me uh, from Holmes Pharmacy. And, Perry, I've got three locations, but it's it's more than just locations. It's about the people. It is, Coleman. Um, I've been real blessed. We've got a great staff here at Holmes Pharmacy. I have pharmacist Charles Reed and Mandy Lamb here. Down here in Hamilton, we have Kim Story, John Ritchie, and Garrett Brown. And we have awesome staff down there. And then we also here at Sawmill inside the Piggly Wing, we have Elise Jeter and Scott Burton running that store. So get our app. Go to our website. We'd love to see you. If you got a leak, Papa Smith, take a peek. 
Are you experiencing roof leaks or yellowish stains showing up on your ceiling? The longer you wait, the harder it becomes to ignore and possibly the more expensive the repair becomes. Ricky Smith Roofing is locally licensed and insured and waiting for your call today at 706 at 840195. At Ricky Smith Roofing, they offer a six-year workmanship warranty on all new shingle and metal roofing installations. Call Ricky Smith Roofing at 706 at 840195. Hello, I'm Steve Boatner, your LaGrange Edward Jones Financial Advisor. I believe in learning about you so I can understand what you're working toward before you invest your money. Whether you're planning for retirement, saving for college for children or grandchildren, or just trying to protect the financial future of your family. Call me, Steve Boatner, or just search Edward Jones Steve Boatner to get started. My Edward Jones office is located at 119 Poplar Circle, just off Lafayette Parkway in LaGrange. Edward Jones, making sense of investing, member SIPC. Now let's get back to the action. Troop High School Football on the Eagle Sports Network. Welcome back to True High School Tiger Football. The Tigers have won tonight by a score of 28 to 14. I'm glad I had that in my mind because they've cut the scoreboard off. I guess they don't want to look at the <laughs> losing score. Uh, they, they love their pyrotechnics and their lights and they dim them and do all kinds of cool things, but when they don't get the win, they just shut the board off there at the end. Uh, Coach Listen now addressing the, the, the troops there and uh, letting them know how proud he is of them about you know, coming away, especially a, a difficult ending to this contest with a little bit of going back and forth between the teams. You kind of hate that, to have this uh, that kind of confrontation Close out a, a big win for the Tigers. Hey, Jack. Go ahead, Greg. All right, got Coach Gusson here. Uh, uh, yeah, Coach McInvale would like to say something too, but we're going to let him uh, tell you what, Coach. Wow, as you just told the team, we just took uh, took that region championship opportunity away from Trinity Christian. Now, with that victory, we're going to discuss it a whole lot more Monday night, but sets up a huge region match between our Crosstown rivals next Friday night. Well, the big deal is – these guys, Trinity, kind of got the feelings hurt a little bit last week. So we knew they were going to come out and play really, really hard. Uh, but Trinity had a chance to win the region tonight. If they would have beat us, they would have won the region. And uh, now they go to fourth. So we're somewhere first, second, or third. I'm proud of our guys. We're eight and one. Uh, you know, if you're mad about being eight and one, you know, we got we got it pretty good. You know, I'm, I'm uh, proud of how we responded. Proud of the defense tonight. I thought we played really good. I tell you, we were talking about that earlier. Third quarter was – was wow offensively both teams kind of beat ourselves up but defense all night tonight just set the tone and personally i'm pretty proud of jeremiah horde and and greg houston the way they played those corners uh, yeah you're talking about two first year starters out there on the corners uh one junior one sophomore played really really good thought coach Prather had a good uh game plan but really i thought physicality was pretty good we got to be able to run the ball but we got to throw it a little bit more to open up some running lanes and, uh, but all in all, we'll take this win. I think we got out of it with just minor bumps and bruises, and uh, we'll get ready for next week. Well, we're excited, Coach. Uh, a lot of fans have been texting us, and we're excited about Monday night. I told them, hey, if you can't be there, listen to Monday night show, 730 at Your Pie Pizza. Well, we appreciate all the fans over here tonight. We needed a game like this because we hadn't played a complete four-quarter game in about a month. And so you kind of saw it tonight. We got a little tired at the end, that kind of thing. But just glad uh, that we got through it and proud of the folks that came out tonight to support the Tigers. The Tiger Nation did travel. I tell you what, they're standing all along the fence line, packed the Trinity Christians visitor stands, proud of the Tiger Nation, just as Coach said. So, once again, congratulations, Coach, and let's go get them next Friday night. Thank you. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. There you go. You got Coach Gus's comments there on the sidelines. Uh, you know, he's right, Trinity Christian, Jack. Uh, they they could have won the thing tonight, but – you know, had the feelings hurt last night. The Grange kind of put it on them. And, and uh, so the Tigers knew they were in for a battle tonight and a battle they gave them too, Jack. Yes, they did. They said come away with a big win, 28-14. to 14. Let's take another break and we'll come back and close it out live here from Trinity Christian on Eagle Sports. When you make the right decision, it just feels good. Like picking that perfect accent rug or choosing a good night's sleep over an all-night crime show binge. It feels really good to make the right insurance decision, too. That's why State Farm Agent Matt Orr is right here in LaGrange to help you select the right protection at the right price. Matt Orr will make sure that you understand.